Oh. Ah. <laughs> How's that? How's that? Forehead wise. Uh, yeah, I yeah, yeah, I'm good. But I'm good? but will you be brighter? That's the question. Oh, let's find out. I think so. I think I'm a little brighter. I think I'm you are. not too glossy. No. I think that's good. Better. Let's give it a Look try. Look at you, lighting technician, director of photography. Blind squirrel can find a nut every now and then. DPBG. That's right. That's what they called me in high school. That's right. All right. <laughs> okay, you ready to do this? I am so ready. Good. I am ready too. Let's do this. <gasps> Welcome everybody to episode number 113 of the Goulet Pencast, where fountain pens are still a thing. I'm Brian Goulet. I am Drew Brown. And we're here from Goulet Pens to deliver this casual and informal, tangential and extraneous, superfluous and extemporaneous fountain pen show, where we talk about what's going on at the Goulet Pen Company and in our fountain pen lives. In today's show, we're going to be talking about the Pilot Silvern as a gift pen. It's a fun word to say, Silvern. 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 Uh, the custom nibs on the Homo sapiens, and if they really make a difference... We're gonna talk about a pen that we each want from each other's collection. Hmm. And the most unique ink colors that uh, we have. I originally wrote in our collection, but I don't think that's actually the question. I did the classic like read through and then mm. misread it. But mm. I think it's I think it said in our opinion, not in yes. our collection. So most unique colors in our opinion. Uh, it might be a little shorter video today. I don't know. You know before we do, because you're seeing the timestamp. But we're trying to squeeze it in. There's no reason it shouldn't be shorter. I'm not going to hold ourselves to that because we sometimes just find a way. Yeah. Right? Pareto principle. Um, we're also going to be taking off the pen cast next week because of Thanksgiving. And we're taking some time off to be with our families and stuff. So uh, we're going to be back on December 1st. So whatever we do today has to be good enough to hold you over for two weeks. So Drew, we got to make it worth it for the people. All right. All right, let's do it. All right, we'll I'm it going off. to rhyme the entire pen cast. Okay. Get ready. Awesome, that sounds good. Yes. I'm going to do the whole thing in a British accent. Just like an old school demon or something. I don't know, <laughs> some sort of. All right, uh, well, good luck rhyming this epic feedback. Yeah, so I had, have with. you read this one yet? I have not. All right, good, don't, don't read I it. I saw this story, don't read it. Don't read story it. of feedback I want, and I, I was want, like, I, I feel like I need to save it. Yeah, save it. I want to see your reaction. Okay. okay. This is from my friend, uh, I'm C. Fox. All right. Funny story for both Drew and Brian. As Drew was describing the 80s travel mugs, I recalled the day mm -hmm. I was on my way to take an advanced cardiac life support class at the hospital where I worked. Cool. I had my coffee in an open travel mug as described by Drew. You know, narrow top, wide, wide bottom, no lid. Mm -hmm. I set it on top of my car when I went back to get my books and note-taking supplies. I put the mug on the floor of the passenger front seat. I then proceeded to drive to the hospital. I reached down to the floor where I had placed the mug for safekeeping and took a huge swig of hot milky coffee. I held it for a few seconds to cool it down before swallowing and suddenly the inside of my mouth began to burn intensely. My tongue, my lips, and the roof of my mouth. Oh my. I immediately spewed out all of the coffee which I had not yet swallowed against the dash. Oh gosh. I saw three or four yellow jackets come out. My mouth was on fire and I knew I was in trouble. What? I drove straight to the emergency room, and upon arrival, I was given an exam and found that I had at least four bites on my tongue and what? inside my mouth. That is my living nightmare. Yes. In your mouth, getting stung in your mouth? They gave me Benadryl. She drank ah. yellow jackets. How? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me Benadryl and a shot of Epi. Oh, and I called a cl the classroom to let them know. I was a bit delayed, but I would be attending shortly. Oh, my I gosh. took a Tylenol, and once everything settled down, I was discharged and went to class. Lesson learned. For many years, I have been an avid user of Contigo products. Never an open container outdoors. Contigo right here, baby. So the, the, the I had to respond to this because this was left in a, as a YouTube comment. Wow. And um, uh, I had horrifying. to comment to her and say, you started this by saying, Funny story for Drew and Brian. <laughs> this was nothing less than a waking nightmare. Funny like, uh, like funny. Pen Pennywise yes. the movie It. There was nothing yeah. funny about that. Yeah. Wow. Just imagine just pour that coffee. Oh, there's four yellow jackets in my mouth. Like spit out the yellow jacket? Yes. That's terrifying. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> what were they doing in the coffee? Dude? Because she put it on top of the car. And I guess they just... 
flew in. Do they I, like, like coffee? Or I don't something? know. That's weird. Oh my god. Or maybe because it was warm. Like if it was cooler outside and they were attracted to the warmth. I don't know. It's so weird. And why would they stay in there? I don't know. They must so, have like fallen in and been like swimming around in there. I guess. I don't know. Out. So that was horrifying. So oh I'm sorry if I triggered anybody with that, but oh uh, I needed to make Brian suffer. So wow. I had to. Wow. Um, I will never drink out of an open mug again. No, seriously. Um, and I will say, Brian, 100% serious. I joked about the Stealth Brown and a Stealth Northern Lights. Plenty of support for both of those, by the way. Uh, you said there was already support. Did you delete this support? I or did you, uh... forgot I said that. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, mm -hmm. this is better support. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> support so not this from is my brain. Real support that you wanted yes. me to see? Yes, I see. Um, no, so not as many for the Northern Lights Brown, but okay. a lot for the Stealth Brown. And it didn't, Stealth Brown, I can see. That it makes didn't seem a little like they were sense. being silly. It seemed like yeah. they were like, actually, no, this would be pretty, pretty cool. Stealth Brown is like mud. That's like, yeah, you but want like, to look like mud. You know, think, of like a, think of like a matte, you know, sailor with like a... Uh, oh, a matte brown. Yeah, well, that's what the stealth is. They're, they're all no, matte. No, they're not matte. No, they're not matte. They're shiny. Really? Yeah, they're shiny. They're just dark. Oh. Yeah. I thought stealth green was flat. Nope. Shiny. Oh, dang, okay. Yeah. I knew stealth purple was shiny, but... Yep. Okay. Well, all the, all the ones we've done have been shiny. Oh, dang. Yeah. All right. Not glittery, but shiny. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway... Brown, gold. Sailor doesn't do gold, a lot of matte. They gold gold hardware. Anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah. And then, of course, we did, uh, as you asked our for friends out there, if anybody refilled Varsities, and we did have a handful of Varsity refillers as okay. well. Okay, yeah. And then another person who said that, like, oh, well, I had one from the 80s that still works. Like, wow. there's no limit to the Varsities That's amazing. Potential. Yeah. When did the Varsity first come out? I don't even know. I don't know. But it's, the 80s, apparently. But yeah, at least. At least. So that's all my feedback. I had that one wow. long story, so I, I kept it a little uh, short. Okay, but that's, uh, that's, wow. Yes, indeed. I will have nightmares about that tonight. That was my that was my goal. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, a Corinna Pinto. Sorry if I mispronounced that. I had gotten ink up behind the rubber stopper of my Benu converter, which is like a standard international converter. Mm -hmm. And was glad to see you guys had a video on how to disassemble a converter. Okay, I couldn't get it to work, but found a tip disassembly free that I thought to share for fellow fountain pen people. Okay, I'll address that in a second, but I'll keep reading the comment. Okay, empty the converter, cover the opening with your finger, twist the plunger up as if you're drawing up ink. So this is with the hole covered, I guess, with mm -hmm. your finger. The pressure created will draw the ink from the back of the rubber stopper to the front. Interesting, because you're creating a vacuum, I guess, when you're doing that. Mm -hmm. And to equalize it, it's going to draw the ink out of the back, like behind the seal. If, if the seal, if the seal is failing and ink is getting behind the seal, obviously yeah. there's there's something that is allowing ink past that. Yeah, yeah. And conceptually, if there's if there's a way. And you're creating a lot of force. You could make it go back the other way. I've never heard of this or tried it. That's, that's why I put the comment in here. I thought that was fascinating. kind of genius. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to try this. Right? Because I've had a couple converters. The thing I will say about the disassembling a converter video. So back in the day, they used to be able to like unscrew a part and disassemble. And they've all pretty much changed now, the yeah. standard international ones, to be press fit. So you can, with effort, pull the press fit thing apart and still disassemble it, but it's pretty tough to do. You need like a rubber grip and like a lot of The easiest grease. one to disassemble is still the platinum converter. Platinum still has the screw threads. Yeah. Pretty much everybody else is press fit. So. There's that there's that clear converter that you see in some pens. That one is uh, yeah. threaded. Yeah. I, I like that one a lot. Yeah. It's got the white gasket. Um, Which so is only like a single seal gasket it's not like a double like the normal ones are double right so it's not as sturdy of a converter but you can disassemble it i guess yeah. One so of my favorites. that's a cool trick if yeah. yeah maybe we'll try it out and if it's like something repeatable and reliable maybe we'll have to like put it in a video somewhere yeah. thank you for share that. it with the world that was really cool very cool thank you for that tip uh jeffrey hall says thanks all caps guys for another fun pen cast, I actually have a couple of those Pilot Varsity pens that I bought in the early 2000s, I think. Here's another Varsity comment. They have stripes on the barrels. Yep, that's the that that was the design. They just changed that like two years ago mm -hmm. uh, to the like, diamond pattern one they have now. 
Um, anyway, I found them last week and saw they didn't have the caps snapped down. Mm. I was about to throw them out when I decided to dip the pens in a cup of water and see if I could get them to write. Lo and behold, they did. I thought that was pretty interesting, being essentially uncapped for all that time since the early 2000s. That's incredible. Yeah. I think the varsity might be the most amazing fountain pen ever created. <laughs> I think so. It's like a mythical creature at this right. point. You can barely do anything. That's wild. Treat it however you want and they'll never die. It's like the Highlander of fountain pens. Mm. All right. Jay Hannah, ironically, they're like made to be disposable too, which is yeah. just the funniest part That's of it really all. That's ironic. Um, Jay Hannah says, another therapist here. Great work, Brian and Drew. Great support. EMDR is amazing. If your therapist is using eye movements, maybe have them hold a Lamy 2000 to aid your work. Okay, maybe not, but it might be a great way to build your positive resources. Kudos to you. It's pretty funny. We had um, maybe five therapists chime in in the comments. Yeah. And uh, say that they appreciated your forthrightness about therapy oh, yeah. and your. I'm a piece you know, of work, let me tell you. Well, th there was also some encouragement <laughs> about you know you know Just normalizing it, a little bit. It was yeah. mentioned that uh, you know you know most of the work in therapy is done outside of the therapist's office, and yes. you know that was mentioned, and so uh, you you got some attaboys from our therapist pen friends out there. Appreciate that. I had therapy yesterday morning and had to sort of take like a. Good portion of the day off because it was unpacking all kinds of stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm feeling things. There you go. Just like leg day. <laughs> yeah, it's like leg day for your <laughs> brain and your heart or whatever. But yeah, it's been, I'm not going to say fun because it has not been fun yeah. in particular, but it's been constructive. Yeah, I think that's the helpful. way it should be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, but. Got a lot, got a lot, a lot packed in there. Well, it, it, it's, it's, <laughs> uh, you know, you've got some positive feedback out there, not just, awesome. from, not just from therapists, but from people yeah. that just appreciate, it's cool. you know, the transparency. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Like, like, like that part of this getting to share and normalize that stuff that, you know, Rachel's had the same thing. She's talked about her anxiety and stuff like that too. And it's been cathartic as well to just like not feel like it's so taboo. You know? Yeah. Well, the first step is like, not, you know, when you get over the fact that like, oh God, there's something wrong with me. I'm broken. You're like, no, you're just a puzzle. You know? We're all broken. In yeah. Various it's ways. Not, Let me yeah. Tell you. Nobody's it's just, got it You're just a puzzle out. that needs to get put together. It's fine. Yeah. And mine was like a little more proactive. It was like, ah, I feel like I need to do some work. So I like went and sought it out. It wasn't like, oh, my life has fallen apart. Maybe right. I need to get some help or else my family will abandon me. Like I was a little more, pro not that it was going to go down that path, but you know, some people, that's what it takes to, to kind of cross that bridge, whatever. But anyway, cool. I'm glad that's constructive. Thank you, therapists out there. I don't know how you do what you do. I really don't. It's tough, but thank you. All right. Let's talk about some new stuff, shall we? Yes. All right. I got a couple of things. One, actually two exclusives today that I get to talk about. That's fun. One, we have another Retro 51 Launched coming out. today, Tuesday. Yes. So you'll, it might be old news to you at this point, but if you haven't been looking at our site in the last three days or read any emails, then this might be your first news of it. But we are doing a, another sweater-themed Retro 51 pen. Uh, this is a rollerball pen, and we're calling it Cozy Penguins. So we were like, you know what? We've done sharks. We've done... What abominable else snowman. Snow, abominable snowman. We were like, what else is a cute, like winter themed kind of thing? And we were like, penguins. Penguins are cool. So it's adorable. You should go check it out. And it's cool because it's um, the trim on this is a like matte blue. Yeah. Which I don't remember ever seeing. I don't know if it's the first time they've ever done it, but it's not something I've certainly recalled. I'm sure they've done it somewhere, frequently. but I can't think of where. Yeah, I'm not going to say like we're the first to do it. I mean, but. It looks Definitely really, the first one really we've cool. had. Yeah, and it looks yeah. really, really cool. So um, we have those for $56. We It's like going to be a one and done kind of a thing. It's just a like an exclusive popper of sorts. Um, so if you're interested in that, go check it out. You'll be able to get any one you want except for 84 because I think I know where that one's ended up. Um, <laughs> so go check those out. We will probably not have them too long because they usually sell fairly quickly. And so by anyone we'll you want, he doesn't mean you get to pick your number. You're just going to get one. Yeah, but you won't get number 84 <laughs> for sure. Um, that one's on my desk already. Yeah, that's a good point of distinction. We can't take number requests, but anyway. Um, and then the other pen that I have is a Monteverde Innova Formula M fountain pen. So this is like the braided. Um, 
it's like a wire braided. It's not carbon fiber like most of their other stuff. It's like there's an actual texture to it, which some people love and some people do not love. Rachel is known as not being a big fan of this pen because it's too much texture for her. The thing I love about it is that I've never seen a pen this color before. It's cool. It's a deep, deep purple. It's but it's like not like deep, like dark. It's deep, like deep, like well, what is what is it? Deep I, I think of I think of I think of deep purple as like a like a black purple, like a dark purple. This one's more of like a it's fairly fairly black, <sighs> but I don't know. It's not like a. I don't know. It's hard to describe. It's like it's like a, a smoky. It's a smoky purple, um, yeah. which is it's called smoke purple. So it's almost yeah. like gray purple. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's 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 different than just like, like just a, on the border before it turns black. Yeah. You'll have to look at it. It's 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 not like 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 private reserve ebony purple. That's like yeah. That's like black purple. Yeah. This is different. This is like a more. It's it's dark, but it's also light. It's like a gray purple instead of a mm. black purple. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But which is what I like about it most. It's like, you know, you've seen it looks cool. You've seen a bunch of different pens, a bunch of different colors. This is the first time I'm like, whoa, I've never seen a pen in that color before. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So cool. Darker than our stealth purple that we had from Sailor. A little darker than that. Okay. But that was also a darker purple or a bl not black <laughs> dark purple. I don't know. Somewhere in there. <laughs> Judge but you for can yourself. check it out. That's so it's a that one's a special edition that we're doing. It's exclusive to us. Um, and you can check it out. That one's, I forget the price on that one. 60 bucks maybe? Oh, Somewhere I forgot to write it down. Yeah, that's all right. I'll pull it while you talk yeah. yours. Um, next up is a new Platinum and it is a Izumo. And we have had the Izumo in several iterations before, but this one is the Izumo Iro Irushi. And it has a unique nib. Usually, uh, from what I had seen, the Izumo model has had the Platinum President nib, which is one of my favorite nibs. But this one has a new imprint with the Izumo uh, lettering on it. Looks very cool. Uh, comes in two different colors, uh, essentially brown and blue, with an 18 karat gold nib. So beautiful Urushi body, and it's the Izumo style. So it's a little curvy, very ergonomic, very comfortable pen. And that one is going to be selling for uh, $1,240. And there's probably not going to be a lot of them. So check them out. If you like it, uh, pick it up sooner rather than later. And just a quick note, since we are taking next week off, do check back next week. We are going to have some new stuff. We, we know what we're going to have, but we don't have like prices for you yet. And we don't have pictures for you yet. So we're, we're holding off. We don't want to you know say anything incorrectly, but... We are going to have some cool stuff next week, in addition to the fact that we are going to have some early Black Friday deals uh, next week as well. So um, come back, even though we're not going to be here. The website's still going to be there, chock full of fun new stuff and some uh, fun discounts. Cool. What would you find out, Brian? $68. $68. You were pretty close. And the wiring, it's stainless steel wire that's PVD coated. So PVD is like a, what does it stand for? Uh, a, a physical vapor deposition. Really? Yep. Oh, wow. I it's a specific, yeah. It's a it's a more durable coating than like lacquer. Or oh, here it anything is. Anything like that. It's just I put it in the wrong spot. Oh, that's helpful. My my bulleting was off. It's all good. Oh, and we, of course that got there. that one, you know, since it is a Monteverde pen, going back to the uh, Formula M Innova, it'll come with a free ink. There you go. Now through the end of the year, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, moving right along. Let's do some Q and A. Okay, we've got uh, Brian. It's a, it's a very efficient pencast we're doing here, Drew. Heck yeah, we're yeah. On, on track here. We had a busy day, so we elected to make this one a shorter one because we don't want to be here, you know, past the time where Drew needs to go get his son. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So since you've been in gift world recently, recording some videos about gifty stuff, yeah. I mm -hmm. feel like your brain was ready for this question, so I selected it uh, to capitalize on my brain is always your ready for you know mental question. efficiency where you've been. Yeah. So either Charlie or C. Harley, I don't know, says, I'm preparing to mark my daughter completing her PhD next year with a very special pen. Wow. The Pilot Silvern is the front runner. Is there anything I should be aware of buying this particular pen? Mm. Could you please recommend other equally impressive writing instruments on my $600 budget? That's a pretty solid budget. You can work with a lot you certainly of things can. for 600 And I feel like that is a 
like you're going to be able to get a very impressive milestone pen for that Absolutely. amount of money. And getting your PhD, I think, is fitting of a milestone like that. That's a ton of work. I Indeed. literally can't even conceive of getting a PhD. That's, yeah, that's so difficult in my yeah. brain. They're going to need to. They're <laughs> going to need to turn right around and sell it to uh, start paying off their uh, student loans. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully they'll keep the pen. Um, so there are two different versions of the Silvern. First off, I love the Silvern pen. We don't talk about it a lot. It's not a super popular format yeah. of pen, but I really love it. And I actually I love have, it too. I have some like vintage versions. Actually, Pelic or uh, Platinum did did some similar kind of style of that pen that um, I also have some of, and I just I really love it. It's kind of like a it's like a dressed up version of the E95S in my mind. Um, so it's still got that inlaid nib, but this is an inlaid 18 karat nib, slightly bigger. I don't think it writes like any softer or anything like that. So it's like the fact it's 18 karat is like, okay, it's cool, but it's not like it writes so much different. I mean, it writes great. Um, but what's cool about it is it's got that same kind of like torpedo type shape to it. It's got a pretty nice deep posting on the back. Um, but yeah, there's two versions of it. So there's the Kushi, which is a grid pattern. Uh, that kind of resembles the door of an old Japanese house. So it literally just looks like a like checkered kind of grid. It's not checkered, but just grid. It's just grid. I'm trying to describe it more, but it's just a grid. Um, and the other one is Sumugi, which is a silk fabric pattern. This one looks really cool, actually. So it's kind of like, like almost looks like it's kind of like- Wavy. Wavy, yeah, a little bit wavy, but not like huge waves, not like a guilloche type of thing. No. It's just like, I don't know, it's interesting. You, you see the pictures. Wavy like it cloth cool. wavy. Yeah, yeah, and that one I think doesn't feel quite as textured as the Kushi. Kushi will you'll feel that texture, but what I really love about these pens, they are metal, they're silver, um, but the grip itself is resin, so you don't have that like slippery kind of nature to it, um, which is common with a lot of metal pens. So in my opinion, that's the way to do it. Uh, so it's a very comfortable pen to write with. It is a little bit heavier because it's, again, it's it's actual silver. Um, so the thing I will say, so be aware of the weight, it's 37 grams, but it's 21 grams in the body. So even if you don't like heavier pens, you can write with it uncapped and it's still very comfortable at 21 grams. Um, comes with a Con40 converter, which is not necessarily the world's favorite converter, but it's suitable. You can also use cartridges. You can use a Con B or a Con20 if you have one of those handy. Um, but I think this this pen definitely has the panache of a milestone it gift does. pen. Like to me, this feels like it's not your everyday pen. And, and ma really... being made out of sterling silver, you can say that it's a precious metal. And oh yeah, you know, for sure that carries with it. And it's not it's not just like a coating or anything like that. Like it is made, yeah. and that's part of why it weighs what it does. I would say the biggest drawback to like the long term use of this pen is because it's silver, it's going to tarnish. So you do have to polish it up on a regular basis. But I will say. When you polish it, it looks amazing because the way that silver polishes, I probably don't have to say this because most of you have silver experiences in your life, but when you polish up silver really bright, it just, it shines like no other like metal can. It and you, looks incredible. you don't polish it like always fully, like around the imprint or, you know, the raised bits of the design, you might miss some spots, so it provides this really nice relief to the you imagery. Can, yeah, so absolutely. it depends on how you polish. Like if That's you really true. if you really That's go true. to town, you can get everywhere because it's not a high relief. But yeah, you know, if you just do the, you can if you do a light polish, you can get more character, of an interesting yeah. character to it. Yeah, or you can just leave it unpolished and just get that kind of really naturally tarnished look. Mm -hmm. It's it's not everybody's look, but it also looks kind of cool. And I will say it doesn't tarnish up like terribly. Like, no, you know, it doesn't because, turn brown. Yeah, I mean. If you're handling the pen and touching it a lot, it'll tarnish faster because the oils from your hands will tarnish it more. Um, but I, I think I want to say that it includes a little polishing cloth in there, but it's probably a good idea to go ahead and pick up like a silver polishing cloth. You can get those at pretty much anywhere that sells jewelry um, because it has jeweler's rouge like in the cloth. We sell our own polishing cloths too that have the jeweler's rouge in it as well. Um, that's really handy for polishing up silver especially but you know like any silver when you polish it up it's going to get that like black tarnishy stuff like on the cloth so it's a good idea to have a, either a bigger cloth or cloth that you replace on a somewhat regular basis but um i mean it looks incredible and it's i think it's i think i think you're up right up the right track like that's a fantastic pen to give as a milestone gift um so um 
if you want some other recommendations, I definitely have some for $600. You know, you got plenty to work with. Um, I got some that are, you know, not as expensive. Some that are kind of walking right up to that line. Of course, you can get anything you want. Like any pen, like 300 and up is going to be look really cool and be kind of special. Um, I had the Pilot Custom 823. That one's always a good one. It's a great pen for doctors. Um, it's very popular. It's freaking, people freaking love that. That or the 743, also comparable. Um, both look great. Uh, the Pilot Vanishing Point Stripes. So this one is, it's it's a vanishing point, you know, so it's maybe not for everybody, but what's cool about this one is it basically looks like a silver pen, but it's coated so you don't have to polish it all the time. So if you want like a little lower maintenance version of a really nice looking silver pen, that one could be the ticket. Um, that's pens 336. So save a little bit on your budget there. Same thing with the custom 823, it's 336 as well. Um, pretty much any Sailor, Pergear, Pergear Slim, that suits your fancy. I think they all look really nice. They all look pretty classy and could certainly be a milestone, especially if somebody's not like super, super in the pen world, your average sailor is gonna look incredible. It's gonna look like nothing else they've ever seen. Um, and you have tons of color options to choose from. So I think that's cool. And those will all be, you know, certainly under your budget. Um, I said the Platinum 3776 Sands of Komodo. So this is a relatively new one. I think it's a North American exclusive. It's this gorgeous turquoise color with rose gold trim. It looks so sharp. Uh, $304 for that one. Um, so that, I don't think it's a limited edition. I think it's more like a special edition kind of a thing. So I they, don't know if that's out yet. Is it? I think so. Should probably double check that, huh? No, I'm pretty sure it's on the site and it's there. You can see it. Okay. Yeah. We'll double check, but um, so that one I think is cool. You got lots, oh, of, yeah, lots of nib it's options. Out. Yeah, it's it's relatively new. We just got it in. We haven't talked about that in this. Uh, well, we just did. We must have missed that. Yeah, maybe. Anyway. Yeah. 304. Go check it out. It looks, the pictures look really good in person. I think it looks even better. It looks like beautiful blue water. The blue like just jumps out at you. So that pen's really cool if, if that, you know, fits the vibe. Um, Pelican M605 Tortoise Shell Black. Ooh, that's that a good one. That is a sharp looking pen. An M605 is a really comfortable size for, for just about anybody. It is. Um, that's one of Rachel's favorite like pen sizes. She loves and that. Pelican has that prestige, like yeah, milestone got, look to it. It does. It's it got carries, a good presentation. It has a presence to it. I yeah. feel like, I feel like Pelican and like Mont Blanc and stuff like that have more like that, like recognizability to Indeed. it. You know, it's like, it's really cool. Um, so that one is definitely worth a look. And I threw this in where they were just for fun, but the Sailor Luminous Shadow King of Pens, because it is a Sailor pen with the King of Pens nib on it that's sub $600. It's the only one. So if you want, it's a bigger pen, so I don't know if it's gonna fit the vibe. It looks very different than all the other pens that I've recommended here, but they got like four or five different colors. They look pretty cool. And it's got that big honking nib, which is, really fun and impressive and writes great. So I think that one you could throw in the mix as well. But I think the Silverman is awesome, an awesome pick. And if you're inclined to do that anyway, there's no reason you shouldn't get that as long as the polishing thing is not gonna hold you up. Those those are solid picks. Um, I was trying to find some while you were talking and mm. all the ones I thought of were over uh, $600. It's weird. Yeah. It's like there's a big jump between like 400 and everything goes to like 800 yeah. after that. There's a lot. There's a lot that is in, is in like the six to 800 that I was yeah. like, oh, I can, oh, that's not. Right, yeah, yeah, it's a weird little zone but, there. Yeah. Um, the only downside I will say about the silver, which I love, I really mm -hmm. do. I love the shape and form factor of it. The weight, if this is going to be a pen that, you know, um, now uh, there's a lot of different PhDs out there, uh, but if it perchance this would be, a medical professional that might actually wear the pen, you know, in a pocket, the silver might be a little stressful for that pocket. But yeah, maybe. So I, I might say that something more like the 743 would be. It's a, gonna be lighter. Yeah, a lighter option. But um, that is a stunning, stunning pen. So if but if it's if it's not a super if it's like gonna be a desk pen, then I think the silver is a great choice. Yeah, I don't know if you'd want to carry around your like milestone pen that was like well i don't know it's tough because gift, like if right? this if this person is a fountain pen person then they're gonna write with anything right um oh it definitely should be definitely is gonna be written yeah with. that is assumed 
Um, but uh, yeah, I you never know. I've seen people walk around with some very expensive pens. And, I've seen people at pen shows with just like emperors in their pocket, just chilling, and that's yeah. their daily writer. And I'm like, that's your mm. baller. Go for it. Yep. <laughs> Live it up. All right. Well, those are good, 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 good picks, cool. Brian. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I got a question from Laura RPH. I'm so sad to hear that the Visconti Homo sapiens nib is not consistently perfect. It's truly my grail pen. So be honest. Does the custom nib grind option you have solve that issue? I so want that pen. Well, Laura's not alone. And I wanted to answer this question because this was a YouTube comment, actually. Okay. And I was going to reply in the comment, but I'm like, mm. there's just too much to say here mm. because we are going to be real with you. We are going to be honest. We do try to sell pens, but we also want you to get a pen that you're happy with. So we're going to be yeah. we're going to be real. Um, and the the Sconti Homo Sapiens is an interesting pen for a couple of reasons. So I wanted to say some specific things about this and about if we ever did allude to any sort of inconsistencies with the nib performance. Um, first off, many, many Homo sapiens come with well-tuned nibs. We would not sell them yeah. otherwise. Yeah. If most of them were bad, we would not sell them, 100%. Yeah. Um, the thing to keep in mind is this. We know that these are grail pens, just like Laura said here. Um, pens that have been desired for long periods of time and likely saved up for for long periods of time. So because these are expensive, extremely popular, and highly sought after, that then creates a scenario where a retailer like us will hear about virtually every imperfection. Mm -hmm. That is an important distinction here with the Homo sapiens. Yeah. Um, so whereas another pen, maybe even another pen at the same price, might have the same issues, but the awareness of those issues don't gain the same level of community penetration. Mm -hmm. So you do have to keep that in mind as consumers and you know as we do as retailers. The exposure of this pen and the just the overall gravitas that the Visconti Homo sapiens has both before you purchase and after you purchase is just very different than you know anything else. Um, now, not to say that it's not flawed, but one thing that I thought of was how, like you hear so many people complain about Star Wars, right? Um, heard, yes, you don't. Heard. Hear, when was the last time you heard anybody complain about Battlestar Galactica? The only thing I know about Battlestar Galactica is that Dwight watched right. it on The Office. That doesn't. I mean know nothing else. <laughs> Star Wars probably better than Battlestar Galactica, but just because you haven't heard any complaints about Battlestar Galactica doesn't mean that that is going to be a better intellectual property. Mm. You know, they're both sci-fi spaceship alien movies. But one has the community um, expecting something very, very high. It's more scrutinized. It's like so the much more the scrutinized. expectations are higher. When yes. somebody now, has any type of experience that doesn't live up to the expectation, it gets talked about and talked about and, and talked about. And exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, neither Star Wars nor the Visconti Homo sapiens are perfect. And that's okay. But... You know, I'm not trying to say that every Visconti is perfect and you should not believe anything you hear. That's not the case. Like, you know, believe what you want. But I'm just wanting to let, give you some context about, like, where the perception is there. Um, so to answer your question, though, Laura, yes, if you buy the CSI grind on the Homo sapiens from Mark Bacchus, it's going to be pretty darn perfect because Mark Bacchus is, like, <laughs> the freaking best. Yeah, he's tuned it and yeah. obviously ground it and, yeah, all so, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. It will be better. Like mm -hmm. that's just you know you know I don't believe anything he touches will be better. Right. For like it, I, I, think. <laughs> I don't even think Visconti would disagree with that. Like yeah. Mark Bach is amazing. Yeah. Um, so I'll say if you truly love that pen, if that if that is what you want, then get it. Like that pen is seven hundred dollars. If you do end up having to send it off for forty five or fifty bucks to have it made perfect, then so be it. Like granted, yes, you shouldn't have to do that to any pen. Um, but even a so called perfect nib could benefit from a custom, a custom tuning to your specifications, especially at that price point. Um, even brand new pilot pens can be made better by a, a skilled nib technician. So in, in my opinion, if you're spending that much money, even if it feels great, it could probably be made better. It could be, depending on the brand or how it comes from the factory, maybe it's being made a little bit better, maybe it's being made a lot better. But 700 bucks is a lot for a pen. There's no reason you shouldn't expect perfection, but if it isn't perfect, there's also no reason you shouldn't 
seek out that perfection. Like mm -hmm. if that's what you want, find a way to get it, whether it's out of the box or with a little bit of post sale love. Like my point is get what you want. If you have emotionally connected with a pen, find a way to get that pen. Yeah. Um, and of course we, if you buy it from us, we'll help you every step yeah, we'll of the way. We'll work with you. Don't feel like if you get a pen and it's not up to your expectations that you have no option, but we're not going to leave take it to a nib master. Yeah. We will definitely work with you. But the, what a, what a nib professional will do is be able to like really tune it to your liking. So if you'd like it to be a little wetter, a little smoother or whatever, they can, they can get it to be exactly what you want. Cause honestly, sometimes the nib is exactly what they're making it to be you know, any brand, but it just might not quite be the way that you might like it. And that's tough, especially when you're buying online because you don't necessarily know all those little nuances. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that at that price point, you should be really happy with what you get. And if you buy, you know, setting realistic expectations, you know, is really important. And then once you get it, if it doesn't like live up to what you want, talk to us about it because that's like what we're here for. Yeah, talk to us. And if you've already bought it somewhere, like just make it something you love. Like there, yeah. there, there are professionals out there that can make it perfect for you. There it's really worth, are. So it's worth the trouble. Yeah. yeah, don't don't settle. If you've got your heart set on something, go after it for yeah. sure. You have anything go. else to add on that? No, you said it pretty well. Okay. You said it pretty well. Yeah, I've just, you know, I'll say it like, I've definitely like, all rumors like are rooted at least in something, right? Like there is, we see slightly more issues with some Visconti nibs than others, but I will say also Visconti has changed their nibs a bunch of times they have. over the years. So it's been more confusing and more difficult to sort out like what's current, what's relevant versus like what was old nibs and it's not an issue anymore. We're seeing fewer issues with the nibs they have today than we've had in past versions of the nibs. So while I don't want to be dismissive of the legitimate nib issues that might've been experienced before, I will say we are seeing fewer issues um, in the latest variations that uh, they've been coming out with. And they've been very responsive um, when we have had issues and feedback for them. So yeah, that's kind of where I'll leave it. And I've had other pens that I've spent that much on from other brands that have not met my expectations too. So yeah, that that's my thing. And you know, you know I, nothing's perfect at that price. Even if you as much as you might hope it to be. It's no it's tough. And, nibs, are, nibs are tough to get right. And and I've spoken to several nib technicians who have talked at length about, you know, pilot nibs that came to them from the factory that needed a lot of love. And I remember, you know, first couple of times I heard that, I'm like, what, really? Pilot? No. But yeah, hundred percent. Like you know, nothing, you know, it's very, very hard to get a nib perfect consistently. It's a very small like tolerances that you're working with on it that. is like and incredibly small you know most like i would say 90 percent of nibs uh that are that come on fountain pens are you know have some degree of hand work done with them uh, at the end i'd say like oh, lamy sure. doesn't i don't think um they with, do, with their with steel their nibs bold, uh their steel nibs are pretty automated yeah their but old nibs there's hand work for sure yeah so like that that's another thing too it's like mm -hmm. no amount of hand work you know is without a percentage of human error. True, because there are humans involved. Yeah. Yep. Cool. I had something else to say and I totally forgot it. So All right. let's move it along. All right, next up is a question from my friend Becky. And Becky asks, is there a pen you want from each other's collection? Mmm. Mmm. I'll be honest, there's one that came to mind for me with your collection. Mm. And then I realized I don't really know that much of what's in your collection. So Did you not watch others. the Pencast episode with Drew revealing his collection? Um, it's all there, Brian. You know, I don't even remember. You watch all the Pencasts, right? I had for breakfast right? this morning. Ugh. I don't even remember the pencast that I was in and I know. wrote, you know. Sometimes like, I have people message me like, oh my gosh, in episode one, two, that was so funny what you said. I'm like, you're like, huh? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That might have, that may as well have been 20 years ago. I probably would have done more research if I didn't already have like a solid answer. You know, it was just like, it, there may be additional pens that I would want. But technically the question is, there is there a pen you want? And I had... I had a pen. What is that? But then I saw you had three. So I was like, oh, Well, you have a lot more pens than I do. <laughs> True. Proportionate <laughs> to the collection, sure. Uh, the one that came to mind for me was your Visconti Divina Desert Sands. Oh, yes. That's just a cool material. You really don't. I think it's Desert Spring. It. Desert Spring. Oh, you might be right. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, a special or limited edition or something. Yeah. From like 15 years ago or something. It's a crazy celluloid. It's a crazy celluloid. 
it just looks so cool. And yeah, that one's really yeah, neat. It's and a fun one because that one I got I have like the LE version, so it's yeah, a back it, filler. It Desert Spring, yeah. Um it's not a uh, it's not like one of those twisty piston yeah, retractable. Like, it's, it's different in so many ways. Yeah. I think it's, it's got cool an ink window too, which is yeah, it's cool. less less common. It's cool as heck. I, I like, like that it. one. Yep. Um, so you have a ton that I wouldn't mind having. I do have a lot. Yeah. Um, so obviously the first one that comes to mind is the M90. I would swipe I mean, that thing in a heartbeat. <laughs> uh, but then again, I wouldn't want you to not have it. I just want to clone it so mm. I can have one. Well, that's, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, would now, you trade me your Desert Spring for it? No. Um, that is an uneven trade. No, that's yeah. All, yeah. You can get it. It's an, a lot easier to find an M90. Thing is, like, you, yeah, you can get an M90 on eBay for less than 400 bucks, I know. So yeah. I just need to do it or get a Mu or a Murex. I need to just do it. Um, and then not getting cheaper. one I absolutely would just take and not leave you with anything else is your Namiki custom impressions. Yeah, that's that cool. one. Because I know Rachel has one too. So I'd be like, I'd be like, no, I'm just taking that thing because you, you, you can use Rachel's and I can have that one because I already have two and I could have a third. And that, that I need it more than you do is what, I, what I'm saying. So uh, you have the flat top version. I do. Which is really cool. I have the custom impressions LE. I don't have one of those. Yeah, I just have the top. regular old round top. Flat top, baby. Yeah, I have the red one too. I have the red and black I've like yours. That. I've got that one. Yeah. And then you've got, got you've got the, got the red and black one too? I've got one of those. Oh, dang it. I've All got right. the, I think the one I don't have is like the green. There's also like the one that you have, the flat top one that you have. Is they like didn't the, make that in a little one though. Oh, okay. um, they well, made did, a yeah. medley, which was like purple and medley. blue. Oh, you have the medley. Okay. I have both. Do you I have, have the, the do you have the blue? How many do you have? Do you have four? I don't think I have four. Okay. No. Because I think they made a blue and a medley. Maybe. I don't know. Either way, I want I them all. They, mm. I want them all. Can't have them all. Won't get them all, but I they want are, them all. They're incredible. Another thing that I want is one that, you know, uh, I actually purchased, but... Technically, it belongs to the company, and that is the uh, Shown Pocket 6 with the you Monarch. My, you were my mule for that one. Well, I picked it because <laughs> it was the one I thought was the coolest. I was just like, Drew, I want to have an Ian Shown with that Monarch nib. Yeah. And and I picked the he, raddest, he picked most, the most expensive oh, one man. he could find. But it looks so good. It does look really rad. Oh, man. But yeah, so that one, yeah, if I could clone that one. Again, I wouldn't want to take that one from you because it's amazing. But that one definitely comes to mind because that is that's a cool. freaking mad rad pen. That is cool. Yeah, that's a fun one. So cool. yeah, those three uh, popped into my brains right out of the gate. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there is rare one-offs that you have that uh, oh, yeah. I would not mind having. But um, yeah, those definitely those definitely popped in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Solid. There we go. Awesome. All right, Drew, I got a question for you. From yes. Imperator Lucius. Which ink color is the most unique in your opinion, not your collection? This, I read that as collection like three times. Weirdo. Uh, this was a fun one. Yeah. Because it's not like favorite or, nope. you know. Just most unique. It could yeah. Look, it could be terrible and you so hate the color. I, but. I took this as saying like, what is, which colors, to my knowledge anyway. Or properties. Um, don't have an analog like don't have the, uh, another color that's like it you know most unique yeah. unique so yeah um the first one that came to mind was ink studio by sailor ink studio 173 mm -hmm. that one i uh did a video on at some point i think it might have been like you know the chromo shading inks and i called it uh because it was pinkish orange, I called it uh, pinko range like pink orange pinko range but then someone said drew why didn't you just call it oink orange pink and i'm like wow that is absolutely what i should oink. call it so it's oink so sailor 173 wow. is oink um Solid. and that i i just i have not seen that color elsewhere it is very special. sailor uh ink studio manyo whatever they have the haha -ha, the neku yunagi the 123 the 224 they've got like that bluish gray purple which is lovely but they've got it in like a half dozen different colors and it would be the most unique if there was only one of them, but there's not one of them. There's a bunch of them. So I can't say that that is one of the most unique anymore. So, but 173, it is a kind of a orange coral pink hybrid. It has some shading. It has like this cool halo effect. It's, I don't know if I would write with it a bunch, but it's definitely unique. And 
stands out to me as one that I can't point to another ink from another brand that looks just like it. So that is my pick. Sailor Ink Studio 123. Uh, honorable mention has to go to Noodler's Base Date Blue. Like, it's just, it's just, there's nothing like it. There's simply nothing. Like, there's not another ink on the market today or ever that comes close to just how insanely, bizarrely radioactive that thing looks. Um, and then branching out a little bit into the kind of unique, like my one of my favorite inks, especially for this time of year, is the Diamine Winter Spice uh, ink. And it is a brown with green sheen and blue shimmer. So I find that to be pretty unique. It's a color combination that I'm a little biased towards because I love all three of those colors. Those are my three favorite colors. And having them all together in one ink is just a delight to me. So that one comes to mind, but it's not like another brand couldn't do that pretty easily, but that's up there for sure. And then finally, I'm just going to mention all of Ferris Wheel Press's Fairy Tales inks, the ones in the small uh, bottles. I think they're 20 mil, but every single one of those is just insane. Like they're all crazy combinations. Every single new one that comes out, I feel like it's a new combination of this base color with this sheen, with this glitter, or this color with this glitter and that glitter, or this color with a glitter that is both this color and that color. Like mm -hmm. they, they use their fairy tales collection to experiment with some really wild color combinations. So those you can pretty much always expect to be pretty unique. Those are not easily found in other brands. Yeah. These are great choices. Uh, I agree with everything you said. Um, you got me thinking with Bay State Blue. So this one, I don't know, this is maybe more of a property thing than a particular shade of color, uh, but I had Organic Studio Nitrogen. Uh, just the degree of sheen that that thing has is kind of like nothing else. But there's other blues with red sheens out there. So, you know, I don't know if I would necessarily say like that is my number one pick but i mean it like there is nothing else that does quite what that ink does sort of like base state blue a little bit um so anyway i put nitrogen on there um i also put diamond golden sands because when i think about like gold colored ink but there might be some others that have come out now that are similar to that so robert oster aussie liquid gold okay almost so, identical but Diamond Golden Sands was the first that had like that real gold look to it. Okay, you're right. So you're right. We'll strike that one then. That one doesn't count. Um, I had Roaring Klingner Alt Gold Grun. Oh, that's it's a it's a very interesting greenish yellow color. Mm -hmm. It's not my favorite color, but it shades like a freaking mother. It's like and it's definitely the most popular in that brand. Yeah. Uh, it's just a very unique color. And yeah. It was very unique when we first got it. And I don't think anything else has really come out that no, replicates I've, it exactly. There's like, you know, in, if it was, you know, kind of plotted on a chart, there would be a lot of inks around it. But I don't know yeah, if there'd be anything right on top. Quite in that, yeah. So it's the degree of shading that it has and then the, the specific greenish yellow color that it has is... It's very interesting. So um, that one stands out to yeah, me. You, looking at it on its own, you would think that there'd be another one just like it because it doesn't look particularly unique. But then when you look at yeah. all of the other ones around, you're like, oh, you're actually, like, no, oh, that kind of, it stands on its own. Nothing else is quite yeah. matching it. Yeah. Um, and then I had Noodler's Blue Ghost. Oh, yeah. Which is an invisible yeah. ink that it's, glows under black light. Yeah, nothing quite so, like that. You don't have any other clear... Invisible inks that glow no, under black light. So that's no, that one's not, unique. Like I feel like, you know, there are some calligraphy, non fountain pen friendly inks that I've seen yeah. do some crazy wild things. But as far as fountain pen friendly inks, that is the only yeah, one. Yeah, calligraphy ink is a whole other world. Yeah. Because you can you can put actual like pigments and stuff in there. Yeah. You can get some crazy properties with those. But as far as fountain pen ink goes, there's I don't think there's anything else that's comparable to Blue Ghost. Um I put whiteness of the whale on here too. It's another new loose color that it's not, it's like a, it's sort of like a milky white color. It's mm -hmm. not really meant to be used as its own color. It's meant if you want, if you have a red ink and you want to mix it to make it like a lighter pink color, mm -hmm. you mix whiteness of the whale in there. It's not a very popular color, but it is unique. There's nothing else that like milky white kind of color. So I don't know. I guess you could say the same thing about uh, Diatramentus document white. The document because white, yeah, but that's, that's like, that's like the only white that you could yeah. write with. True. So the, true. that one I would say is unique because 
That one, yeah, that one's kind of in the vein. Because if you have vein. black paper, that thing is going to be the yeah. only thing that yeah. you can but see, even white, try to write with. Whiteness of the whale is not even really meant for that. No, it's more like a dilution liquid, if anything, or an kind additive. Of, yeah, so it's like, I don't know, it's it's more of a property thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I guess both of, for that in that respect, you could say the, the document white. Yeah, I didn't think about document that. white until you mentioned whiteness of the whale. I didn't think of it until you mentioned document white just yeah. now. So yeah. Um, Detrimentous document white. It's there we go. One of the it's you know, in order to get white ink, you basically have to have pigment. Yeah. Like there's no there's no white dyes out there, um, so you typically only see that with, like dip calligraphy ink because you can put, you know, fart loads of pigment in there, and you don't have to worry about flow, uh, like you do with the fountain pen. But the document white gets as close as anything we've ever seen. So mm -hmm. It's kind of neat. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, well, we only did four questions today, Brian, but because we're, we're doing good on time, we're doing man. good on time. I have a quick question that I was going to add because it is a quick question. Okay. I'll go ahead and just ask it. Do it. All right. There's a bit of a test. Oh, oh it was a hands-on question. Got my Manio nuts here. Uh, uncap this pen. Oh. Uh -huh. What did I, what did I do? Well, well, well. What did I do wrong? Did ladies do and wrong? gentlemen. No, you didn't. You did what I do. What did you do? What did you do? Someone asks us, Brian, if we, when we uncap and cap pens, go ahead and cap it again. Oh, is it like, do you like, do you like move the body of yes. the pen versus the cap of the yes. pen? Yes. Okay. And you move the body, same as I do. Yeah. I, I mean, sort of both a little bit, but primarily body. Yeah, I only use, I only turn the body. Yeah, because like to me, the nib is the most important part to manage. Mm -hmm. And I would rather control where the nib goes than well, control. Well, try, try, try it the other way. Try using just the cap. Does it feel weird to you? Well, then I'm like, <laughs> then. It definitely feels weird. You look like you're suffering right now. Well, I'm holding the cap. Like, when you turn the cap? <laughs> I feel like I'm putting my pants. Just put it on. I'm just. <laughs> But I'm I'm I want to screw the body in like I can't. No, don't do that. This is insane. Don't Why would you do it this way? <laughs> like this with the clip in the way and everything? Yeah. People really do this. I don't know. That's insanity. Why would you do that? <laughs> it's not that crazy. This is like trying to like brush my teeth with my left hand. I'm like, how do I do this? The way you, like you are struggling hardcore with that. It feels completely unnatural to me. Because I, I have to like lift my hand. Like, I don't know. I guess you can't really drop it because it's like on the pen. But I feel like I'm like fumbling around with Let's the thing. Stop doing that. This is what I'm having to do. I don't know what. I'm just like, it's like the first time I've used a pen before. It really is. No, oh it's always goodness. it's always like body, yeah. body for me. Well, I'm, yeah. right, I'm right handed too. Yeah. So, But I guess I could switch hands. Okay, let me try. Oh boy, let me try. Switching hands and then oh this is weird, like undoing the cap. Okay, like so that. okay, you're doing it much more natural there. Maybe the problem is you were trying to do it with your left hand. That's part of it. Okay, now now recap it. But now the pen is in my left hand. Now yeah. I gotta switch the cap and that like I'm not gonna do that. Like I think that's why because I'm right-handed. Yeah. And I'm I have the part of the pen that I'm gonna mm -hmm. write with yeah. in my writing hand. Yeah. And that's what I'm gonna control. Like that's. I think that's probably the most common. I'm I think just that's... I'm holding it and this is it and this is like. My mm -hmm. aim is with this, my dominant hand. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Why in the world would I take my clearly uncoordinated <laughs> left hand? This is like when I'm trying to like, when you're trying to hang a picture frame or something like that and you're trying to like hold, and you're in a weird position, you're trying to like use a drill with your left hand. Oh yeah. And you're like, Ugh, and you like slip oh. and slam it into the wall and so, you're just yeah. like, is this the first time I've ever used a drill? Like what yeah. is wrong with me? Yeah, yeah. It feels very unnatural. Let's see, yeah, I mean. yeah. You would, could, you'd have yeah. to switch hands. Like, yeah, and I'm like, what am Why I- Why would you do that? Yeah. Why would you do that? That just seems incredibly inefficient. Yeah. Well, I guess if you're gonna post it, it doesn't matter quite as much. Because if you're gonna post it, you post it, but then you're still having to move it into You're the still other hand. switching hands, yeah. So, yeah, I, I didn't know. I didn't. No even, judgment if you do it that way. I didn't it ever- It just feels completely unnatural to me. I when, never even thought about you know, it. You know, and for, forgive me if I, uh, let's see, I have um, the uh, name here that I, uh, I did write it down because I was going to add this officially to are the gonna, document. Are you so. call somebody out? Yeah, I just wanted I wanted to, you know. Um, <laughs> Shout somebody out, not call them out. Mention to the, uh, okay, here we go. This is uh, Emmer Packleb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, 
Yeah, so I that was an official question. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I didn't really know what I did until I saw that question for Immer Pack Lab. Yeah, uh, but I didn't, I didn't yeah. even think. One hundred percent, I'm I'm th I'm holding the cap stationary Firmly. and unthreading the barrel. For now, sure. do you do you naturally to further this question here? Do you normally hold it where the like the cap is on top? <laughs> You know um, what I mean? Or do you normally hold it so that the cap is on bottom? So when you're unscrewing it, if, I feel, if, I, your, I, hand, if your hand like slips. No, I feel like I, I feel like I hold it. Uh, like perfectly level. Yeah, a parallel to the surface. So I got to think about this. I don't even know. <laughs> like Jack Donaghy it's with his so, two mugs. Yes. <laughs> exactly. What do I do with my hands? Or it's like, you know, it reminds me when I was, so when I was in the Corps of Cadets and we had to march places, it was common. We called it Frankensteining. Because you walk all the time and you always, to balance yourself, you step with your left foot and you swing your right arm. So you're always going opposites, mm -hmm. which is how you march. But if you're like overthinking it and you're like under stress, like when you're a freshman getting yelled at, it's not uncommon to like have your right arm move with your right foot and you end up in this right. weird like Frankenstein <laughs> kind of thing. So whenever you see like freshman marching the Frankenstein, you're like, nice. There, yeah, they're yeah. thinking about it too much. Oh man. You know? So it's kind of like that. It's like I'm 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 having to overthink it now because like I've never thought about how I uncap. Yeah, same stuff. Same. So I thought that was an interesting question, and I'm, hmm. I'm hoping that there's a bunch of confused and giggling people out there listening to us right now. If so. you're like listening in audio only, you're probably like, I got to go back and look at the yeah. what they're actually doing. So this makes yeah. sense. Let the yeah. so it, like, I have to really I'm I'm going to hands. assume that everybody is unscrewing the barrel with their writing hand. If you do not do that. If you are not unscrewing the barrel with your dominant hand, please let me and know. And keeping the cap stationary. Yeah. If you're actually just unscrewing the cap with your dominant hand, uh, I need to know so I can uh, watch out for you. Can you see your um, again real quick? So I think when I, now that I'm thinking about it, when I'm, when I'm uncapping a pen, I think I always have the like body of the pen on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I don't hold it like this unless I'm like trying to demonstrate something. My natural inclination, like just when you handed it to me, was mm -hmm. to, to just do that. So that like the weight of the pen is like sitting in my hand. You know that makes mean? sense. As opposed to like unscrewing it like this and then I'm having to pull it out. I don't know, like gravity kind of drops it out. You never think about these things, do you? I'm having to think about it now and yeah. I'm like, I'm realizing how much I don't normally think about it. Yeah, but then when I, when I recap it, I'm always like capping up into the pen and then screwing it in. Yeah, weird. Definitely weird. So. Wow. Thank you for coming along with us on that adventure. <laughs> I'm like so thrown off. It's making me rethink everything about my All life. Right. So that was a good bonus fifth question that for us good. this week. It feels like, have you ever intentionally like uh, tried to put on your pants legs? Like like pretty much everybody puts their pants like their pants on the same way every time. Mm -hmm. Like you either put your left leg in first or your right leg in first. Mm -hmm. I'm always, what do I do actually? <laughs> Do you so remember, I, it's so, so unconscious. You've, you've How seen, do I you've do seen actually, the movie? I think, I'm, I think I'm right leg first and then left leg. You've seen the movie Hook, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember at the end when the Lost Boys are getting? You remember the end when the Lost Boys are getting suited up for the final battle? Yeah, that's how I get dressed. Okay. You know, I just like walk through a bunch of spider webs <laughs> that have my clothes attached to them. <laughs> Yes. You know, the, you know the meal that they have in there? That's how I like to eat my food too. Absolutely. Just like scooping out like mm -hmm. rainbow marshmallows. Invisible hamburgers. Yep. Yeah, man. You, you got it. <laughs> That's how you yep. do it. That's good. Well, Bang -rang. I, I haven't thought about that movie in forever. Oh, I thought about it uh, last week because I added it to the uh, soundtrack for our scavenger hunt. There you go. Mm -hmm. It's a good soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Is that uh, John Williams? I believe it is. I think so. Yeah. It's got some good stuff. Yep. I remember... Weird memory, total tangent, but we got time. Um, that movie came out, I don't know, how old were we? 10, 11, something like that? I have no idea. So we were young. Yeah. Pretty young. It came out in the 90s. I remember that movie because it came out and, you know, it's like a sort of a kid's movie, but it's also sort of for adults too. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, Dennis Hopper, who plays Hook. Uh, Dustin right? Hoffman. Not you, Dustin Hoffman. You get the DH right. No, Dustin Hoffman. No, that's Rain Man. That's not, that is him. That's not him. No. Yes. No. Brian. No. No way. You would know more than I would. I got to look it up. What's the filmography? 1991. Dustin Hoffman. Wow. I'm totally wrong. Who's Dennis Hopper? Dennis Hopper was the bad guy in Speed and Waterworld. 
and uh, he played oh, yeah, totally different guy. dad and True Romance. Okay, I don't know why his name came to mind. I mean, same initials. Okay, yeah, Dustin Hoffman. Wow, that makes more sense. Anyway, I didn't know who any of these actors were. I sort of knew who Robin Williams was. Robin Williams was. Um, but that was just like an early memory I had when my parents were talking about like, oh, that's so weird that Dustin Hoffman is playing Captain Hook. It was an unconventional casting choice. Yeah. But it worked out. It did work out so well that I didn't even realize that that was him. Um, Bad form, Brian. But it shows how great my memory is. I also had not seen that movie, I think, since I was probably 10. That movie came out when we were seven. Drew. That movie made it in my uh, top 20 films of all time. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was Fair in enough. like the in the teens, I think. Can I make a confession? Please. Not a big Peter Pan fan. Never really. I oh, like Peter Pan in general as the IP. I never. I just never. It never resonated with me. Uh, I'll say that like in general, it never really resonated with me. But I love Hook. Like that movie. The movie. I had the sword. There's a lot of good stuff. I had the movie. action figures. Yeah. Like I watched that movie on VHS so so many times. Mm. And the movie poster, I might add, done by Drew Struzan, the best poster artist of good, all time. It is a good poster. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So I am so in love with that movie. It's hard for me to say I'm not a Peter Pan fan because but that that's movie not really is Peter Pan. Not really. That's a, that's a departure for sure. That's like how that's like Mandalorian being but Star it, Wars. But it's also right? like the best Peter Pan IP or the best Peter Pan thing of the Peter Pan IP, I guess. Yeah. You know what's overrated? The Peter Pan ride at Disney World. Oh, for sure. That thing, that like I get it's got good memories, like it's very nostalgic. I don't want to make wait five minutes on the Why is it ride. still the wait is ludicrous? It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Can I just be honest and say that that ride is overrated? Hundred percent. Small world, I'll ride that. It's sure. annoying, but it's the, worth the line moves. Yeah, the line moves. Sure. And it's nostalgic. Peter Pan, I'm like, no, this needs to go. Like, what are your What are your top three Disney rides? Oh boy, I'd have to think about this. I'll let I'll let you think. It's been everybody. A I'm going to def, I'm going to actually just state the best rides at Walt Disney World. <laughs> you think? Are you talking you purely th- Magic Kingdom, or are you opening this up to Epcot? Oh, all all, all, all four all four parks. All parks. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. The best is Living with the Land at Epcot. That's a That's a hot take. The second best. You're not going to have a lot of support on that one. Second best is the Haunted Mansion. And the third best is the uh, Three Caballeros ride in the Mexico Pavilion. Wow. I don't know how much support you're going to have on any of those three. It's pleasant. I mean, it's cool. It's cool. But like Soren? Like Soren would what, what are your three? You were supposed to be thinking. I don't know. You've been more recently than I have. It's been a, been a number of years. Um, Soren is cool. I like that a lot. Living with the I land. Don't know if Living the land is great. It I actually is. do legitimately it love that amazing. ride. The smell of that water. Um, mm. The only thing I would like better is if you could like pick off the like food and eat it as you're riding. That would be better. You have to go to Sunshine Seasons for that. Yeah. Or go to the whatever the restaurant is. The Sunshine Seasons. No, that's not what it's called. The rotating restaurant. Yeah. Sunshine Seasons. Did I they change so. the name? I don't think so. That's not what it was called. Okay. Back in the day. Okay. Back in my day. <laughs> no, it was called something else. Okay. Crap. This is. <laughs> This is one of those things where like Rachel knows this stuff so well, my brain has just wiped it completely because I have no need to remember it except for right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, rock and roller coaster is pretty great. I like legitimate roller coasters, so that one's that one's up there for me. Um, and uh, I don't know. I actually like Summit Plummet. It's a water ride. Yeah, that's it, right? Sunshine Seasons? That's the like fast casual. Oh, yeah, they have like a fast casual one, but the sit down restaurant is oh, called Oh, that's something, something else. different. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's in the place where living in the land oh, is. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. Well, it's really probably. relevant. I'm glad, you, but you all are glad you're still listening to us here. You're like, wow, they really didn't plan a lot for this one. Um, okay, let's see. Where was I going with that? I don't remember. Garden Grill. Garden Grill. That's what it is. Yep. I knew it was something like that. Yep. Um, yeah. And then uh, what other rides? Um, Hmm. <laughs> the Toy Story roller coaster ride is pretty fun. The Slinky Dog one. Mm. I like that a lot. My kids hated it, but they don't like roller coasters. They don't like fun. Archer doesn't like roller coasters either. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Yep. Anyway. Anyway, speaking of kids, you want to get into the uh, nonsense, what's happening, since we're kind of already veering into that? We've segued beautifully into All it, right. so let's do it. What's happening?
Ah, I'll tell you what's happening. Not a lot. Not a lot for Drew Brown. Yeah, you said you had a pretty low-key... Pretty low-key weekend, yeah. Yeah. Uh, coincidentally, it was a low-key weekend because I finished Loki season two. <laughs> a low-key weekend. <laughs> wow, you're on fire today, Drew. Yeah, thank you. What did you say earlier? I don't know, something amazing. You said something earlier in the... Something definitely not we dumb a, at all. We were in a meeting and literally the entire room groaned when drew said i wish i could remember what it was but it was but it was it was it was it was it was, it was, it was, it was that very, timing i was like Boo! it was very good i can't remember what it was i think i blocked it out yeah but you're welcome anyway okay um, loki weekend yeah so i actually i did finish loki season two okay. great tv good. series definitely the by far the best marvel tv series they've done yet okay um by okay. far like i've you know can, did, I make, can i make a confession i've never seen i don't think i've seen anything marvel You've seen Iron Man. Nope. You didn't see Iron Man? Nope. Oh, dang. You've never seen any Marvel movie? I may have seen the original Spider-Man. That's not... That's not that is that not count. Marvel? No. I mean, it, it is, count? but that was before the MCU. I have not the seen... The Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is all connected, began with Iron Man in 2008. I don't think I've seen any MCU movie well, or show. Iron Man's the way at all. Iron Man's the place. I've to heard start. it's good. I've heard Iron Man's good. You don't. Good. You don't have to like. You can just watch that and be done. Okay. It's still like one of the most fun ones to watch, and okay. you don't need to worry about anything else. But you're probably not going to watch it. Anyway. It just seems like a lot. It seems like a lot to just. Well, that's that's my point. It's have like to figure out. Don't figure anything out. Just watch Iron Man <laughs> and be done, and say, "All right, great." I watched. Am I the alone Marvel. in that? Am I weird? I mean, I know it's like the most popular no, franchise. If, of like, all time. I, I would say that anybody who like missed like the first three or four. It was like, no, I'm not going to. It's too late for me. It's like Game of Thrones. It's like, yeah. I'm not going to watch it at this point. Like the same thing happened with Lost and 24 oh. and stuff like that. It's like, I missed it. Yeah. I'm not going to try to catch up. That's fine. Forget it. Well, they're going to, since since a lot of the actors have pretty much like said that they're done with their roles, they're going to try to like restart it. Mm. And okay. that that's what Loki tries to do. It's all about time. And yeah. as a comic fan, I've mm. seen both Marvel and DC for decades reboot their own universes oh, yeah. multiple times. How many Green Lanterns and Hulks and stuff like that? And people like die and they come back. And so like, it's I like will- a soap opera. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I mean, like, they can't do but so much with these characters. And of course the characters can't age. So, you right. know, they need to keep them interesting, interesting by having people die in their lives and have things happen. But then of course- they just can't keep that timeline going. It becomes like it, Grey's Anatomy when you're like, yeah. well, there's like one or two people left it's like from same, the original. It's like same thing with James Bond. Like, you know, they, they have to restart that thing. Yeah. So I've seen some bad time-related restarts. And, you know, I'm not saying that Loki restarts anything, but it does help usher in a new, you know, uh, you know, uh, chapter, I guess. And that it's okay. actually done really well. So cool. I've seen some bad ones. This was not a bad one. So I was actually really happy with Loki. Um... And uh, I did unfortunately have to go to a funeral on Saturday. Oh. Um, um, my uh, uncle, my uh, um, my aunt's husband, mm. um, passed away. Oh, I'm sorry so, to hear that. Yeah, that was unfortunate. I didn't know him super well, but um, it, you know, I he was a nice guy. He was a very mm. nice guy. So I did get to see my dad, and my aunt, and some people from that side of the family whom I don't see very often. So mm. uh, Shannon and Archer came with, and that was Archer's first funeral. So. We had a little bit of explaining okay. to do about, you know, why they did some of the that's things a, that they good, did. That's a, I'm glad, like, my kids have not experienced a funeral <clears throat> yet. Oh, really? Just because, yeah, they, like, we just, my, my grandparents are all gone. Mm -hmm. Like, they're just, there's no one, you know, unless there's like something unforeseen that happens, there's no one like about to hit that point in their life stage. Um, so like, I know it's going to hit them really hard, especially yeah. if their first one is like, one of their grandparents who like they've now like completely grown up with like yeah. that's going to be tough like it's almost easier to like experience that with a slightly more distant relative yeah. first no, as archer a had, i don't i think that he had maybe met this person once he has no memory of them though so mm. it wasn't it was like a you know yeah no one he knew yeah. um but so, still just to like see yeah. a bunch of sad people walking around yeah and knowing how to kind of deal with that yeah and it was actually really short service too yeah in, in a really short you know cemetery service mm -hmm. as well so yeah that you know that was nice um and then that night uh we did run some errands that day and uh we had um a dinner uh with friends that night as well which was nice okay very pleasant there the big part of the weekend though was that i finally acquired a playstation 5 <gasps> so i was very very excited oh my about gosh. that you've been talking about this for a while it, i have been i have been wanting one for a very very long time and uh finally 
finally got my hands on one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> they had a really great Black Friday deal because it's. I was gonna say, yeah, the one this with is the, like the uh, time to get a deal. Yeah, and like the, the, some of the bundles they've had thus far have been like, all right, is that a deal though? Like you get a free game, but it's like just kind of less than full price. The game. This one was a yeah. legit free game. It was Spider Man okay. Two, which is apparently a very good game. I haven't played the first one, so now I need to now I need to do that. Mm. But. Uh, it was they had a new slim version that just came out for the holiday season 2023. Okay. So I went ahead cool. and picked that one up, ordered it ahead of time, went to Target, and Shannon and Archer were checking out what we bought that day. And mm -hmm. I went to the you know uh, customer service counter to get what I had already bought. Right. And Shannon said that the visual of me standing there waiting for them to finish the checkout, holding my PS5. She said I looked like, you know, a little kid. Like a kid, Like Because yeah. <laughs> she said I was just holding it and smiling. And I wasn't trying to look dumb, but apparently yeah. she was like, it was adorable. I'm like, you oh, just okay. can't hide it. No, like, I was very excited. Yeah. So uh, that, that, really was, cool. that was pretty neat. So I've been messing with that, you know, doing the whole setup thing. You can yeah. transfer all your save data from your PS4. So I, oh, wow. okay. I've, I was, I've been playing Metal Gear Solid 5 for the PS4, and now I'm playing the same game wow. at the same point on the PS5. That's crazy. And it, it, it upsamples some things okay. to like not quite 4K, but better. Yeah. And then some games, you can actually put the disc in and it'll say, would you like to upgrade this to a 4K game or a PS5 version of the game? And sometimes it'll be for free and then sometimes it'll cost money. Yeah. And I checked a bunch of my games. I was going through and it's like, all right, what can I upgrade? Some of them were free, some of them were 10 bucks, some of them were yeah. 30. $30 just, just to for upgrade the, upgrade. the visuals? So I'd still, I'd still need to use the PS4 disc, but it would play the PS5 game. Interesting. So, okay. but I'm like, that's kind of like half the price of the disc. Like yeah. I could just buy the full game when it goes on sale or something. So yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I'm not, I've got a, I've got plenty of backlog, so I'm not going to be okay. jumping on that anytime soon. But uh, yeah, that's, that's been a, what I've been kind of uh, nice. messing around with. You can use the PS4 controller though, which is good because those oh. controllers are like 70 bucks. Wow. Um, okay. So I don't have to buy one of those right away. That's cool. It came with one, but for Archer, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, started uh, doing the whole Christmas shopping thing for so, Archer. So I, bought, I took care of Shannon's gift. That should that should have arrived today on the doorstep. Cool. That one's a bit risky. She didn't ask for it. Don't I, say what it is. In no, case I'm not. To watch. <laughs> I'm not. Um, uh, I'm not sure. So mm. uh, I th I think she'll like it. It's it's got okay. some thought behind it, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. Um, with Archer, though, I just wanted to say that I am so glad that he is less materialistic than I was at that age. Oh, yeah. Like, when I was a kid, I my whole... We just wanted stuff. My whole identity was wrapped up in what I was obsessing over for Christmas. Like, I, every year, there was one thing that I just felt like if I didn't get that... I was going to be just crushed and devastated. And he's just not like that. I think that was conducive of the time too. Cause you think so? Like, yeah, it was marketing. Like the whole like Christmas season, there was like a big thing, whether it was like Beanie Babies or Furby or whatever the heck, you know, there was like a big thing that was always the viral toy of our like yeah, with holiday him, seasons growing up. With him, up I'm like, kid. hey, is there any one thing you want or you just want, to, want some surprises? He's just like, eh, you just get some surprises. I'm like, so grateful because like yeah. that's amazing but then at the same time I'm like man i was just a selfish little jerk like because <laughs> i was just like i want this i want this i want this where do i mom where when, when should i make my list should i make my list now do you want my list now like who should i give it to like what what like how big is it how many how many is too much like i was just so selfish yeah uh compared well, to we him. had to watch commercials in between all of our shows that must like have been that. it oh 100 like because they don't 100%. see he doesn't see toy commercials no no, none of that. But we don't. So, we're, we're past that. We don't want to. That's why we have subscriptions to things. Man, so it's can nice. Get, get rid of those ads. It's yeah. nice. Like get, it makes me wonder. Like I get mad. Like I see ads now, and I'm like, no, <laughs> I, no. I'm, I'm past this. I've evolved past this. I don't I just, want this in my does life. Does that mean that like their generation is going to grow up to be less like materialistic? Uh, no, nah, probably not. Okay, marketing is just getting more sophisticated. Uh. So it's not it's like blanket blasted out, but it's more like targeted and focused. But it's not like about acquiring physical things as much uh yeah maybe maybe not i don't know it's different it's different it's very different, different. yeah different and, I, and, I'm, and i'm and i'm noticing that yeah, so sure um it makes it easier for me to shop because i mean i know sure. what he likes yeah and thankfully he still does like transformers it's really cool because yeah. i know that a lot of kids don't play with toys anymore homie loves a transformer 
Like, I mean, Transformers are great. He, he he still loves it. Like he that sort of thing. Like action figures, he'll play with every now and then. But a Transformer, he can still lock into that. Yeah, Even cool. Legos are fleeting for him. But Transformers, really? Yeah, because like you know, you do it once and it's just like all right, done. Like not Joseph, man. Yeah, well, Joseph is like he wouldn't be surprised me if he becomes like a master builder someday. He yeah, like is still obsessed. With yeah, Legos. no, not him. Like, that's gonna be his entire Christmas list probably. He, he likes it. Like we've got him in an after school program of, with for Lego engineering and he's definitely good at it. And, yeah. you know, he, he likes it. But when he's at home, that's not where he goes. Huh. Um, but uh, he's he's fleeting. So who knows? It, it goes in waves. But you, uh, you want to know what's happening in the in the Goulet household? Yeah, let's move Christmas on to you. I'm all, I'm all done. Oh, no. I was, OK. I wasn't trying to take over. No, no. It's a good. Good spot. Parlaying over the Christmas thing. So Joseph, being the mini Rachel that he is, um, for the last couple of years has been keeping a Google Sheet for his Christmas. Oh my God! Gifts. Well, Ellie now also has an interest. She is, she's not as familiar with it because she hasn't had like the classes and stuff. She's just getting into middle school. Um, so Joseph is going to teach her how to set up her own Google Sheet for her Christmas list. And I was like, Oh my gosh, we have a house of nerds. Oh, wow. This is amazing. And of course, everything want, they want is like video games and Legos and stuff like that. Yeah. Ellie's a little more. Ellie's a little more into like crafts and stuff like that. Yeah. Joseph, friggin' just Lego, Sonic, Mario, Minecraft. Like, yeah. And now he's got Steam Deck too. So it's like, I'm sure it's going to be a bunch of that I stuff. I know. I'm glad that he still <laughs> likes Transformers because like, I do like to see a tree with some boxes under under it. Yeah. But like when they're all, when they only want video games, A, they're tiny. B, they're more expensive. So it's yeah. like. You don't you get, get as much. You get like three tiny little yeah. cards, you know, under the... Like, well, that's where you got to buy like socks and yeah. just like a random like shirt, yeah. you know, like stuff you might normally buy anyway, but then wrap it up and it's yeah. just things to unwrap, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. It'll be fun. Um, so related to building things. So CY, who we've had on here before, mm -hmm. gave me and Joseph a little gift. Sorry, CY, I didn't ask you if it was okay to publicize this, but <laughs> don't ask CY for a gift. This is just a personal <laughs> thing. Um, but I think you've mentioned this. It's the Gundam, the little, I don't know technically what they're called. Gunpla. Gunpla. Yeah. So they're like, you know, like how you have like model cars, like and stuff back in the day, like the test doors, whatever cars, and you can like assemble them and glue them and paint them, all that kind of stuff. It's like that, but it's simpler and way better. So you punch out all the pieces and you sort of like snap them all together and you get these like, robots basically um but they're like little action figures they have like articulating joints and stuff like that but it's all based off of like anime characters and stuff so we're not familiar with the anime characters but cy gave one and said hey this would be kind of fun to build with joseph so we started that and i will say it's joseph's having a great time i'm the one like punching out all the pieces and stuff like yeah. that. and i know i have some small like snippers somewhere but uh -huh. i couldn't find them <gasps> so i was just like Forcing them out and like I have an exacto knife, so I was like oh, shaving yeah, down certain gotta, parts. Okay. So I could sort of do it, but it, you know, I'm not familiar with the whole like I've got an extra pair numbering of numbering systems. I, I'll, I might have, I might have, we're like halfway done with the build. Okay. But just because I, 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 lo I, I lost my pair when, um, you know, I got mine from CY and uh, okay. I had to go buy some new ones. And okay. So, but then I found my old ones. So oh, cool. I okay. do have an extra pair. All right. I might take you up on okay. that. Okay. Um, I think we might finish it tonight though. <laughs> oh, really okay. wants to build it. Um, but yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's like I'm trying to keep up with. He can build stuff so much faster yeah. better than me now. So like when we build Legos, I'm like desperately trying to just like sort the pieces and he's like building them faster than I can find them. And I'm like, I feel like I'm getting older <laughs> and I don't like it. Um, but anyway, he's having a blast and it looks really, really cool. Yeah, so, it articulates amazingly well. Yeah. Like the, when the knees bend, they don't just bend, they bend all the way back to the back yeah. of the thigh. It's really cool. Like you can have him in like in a, you know, apocalypse or no, platoon pose like. Argh! Yeah, it's really cool. So Ariel, HG Ariel. The gu I guess Gundam HG is, I don't know if it's a show or whatever, but it's like a. I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works either. I'm trying to make sense of it. I think that there's very little English. In the top of that box, things. it says. Um, I think Gundam HG is like the high grade. It's like a particular like, oh, yeah, style okay. gotcha. or something like that. But I don't know if it's like Ariel is the character, I guess. I don't know what yeah. show it's from or yeah, whatever. I don't, or, I don't know. I know that the, uh, the anime, on the top left, it says the witch from Mars, I think. Yeah. Um, so I think that might be that the, the I think that might be the series. The series, okay. Um, but there's a lot of different Gundam series. I mean, it's been going on forever. Yeah, and they've got some like Star Wars, you know, X-Wings and stuff like that too. So I was like, hmm. So they got some other other things, other franchises on there too. And I'm like, hmm, okay. If Joseph's really into this, I might get some snippers and then like 
not feel like I'm going crazy, but it was, it felt a little tedious for me, but Joseph was having a great time. Yeah. It was great to just bond with him. So that was fun. It's very relaxing for me. Yeah. Like it's very soothing. Okay. Yeah. It's like a. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. It was just my first time doing it. So I was like, I didn't know what I was doing. But anyway. At the uh, San Francisco <laughs> Pen Show, CY and I stayed up in the hotel lobby until like the whole Pen Show closed down doing one of those. Nice. Yeah. I can see that. It was, it was great. That's fun. It's a good bonding yeah. experience. Yeah. Um, what else here? So I actually spent some time on the trails recently. I had, Oh, nice. Now that it's getting colder. No yellow jackets. I'm not drinking any yellow jackets in oh! my coffee. Um, yeah. So I did that. I spent probably five hours on Saturday, just with a leaf blower blowing off all the trails. Cause I had like, Oh, okay. Cause it's so many pine trees. It's just like a, probably a four inch, five inch thick bed of pine needles and branches you have a and backpack stuff like that. Leaf blower. I do. Yeah. So this it gas was, powered. Yeah. 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 Nice. I got smaller ones that are battery powered for like the driveway and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what the kids use, but I need the backpack one. Cause I've got a lot of land and yeah. it's just sometimes you just need gas. So I did that for, many hours, but the weather was beautiful. It was so great. Um, you know, I was blowing a lot of leaves cause we have tons of leaves on our property. And if you remember before I built this like big aluminum frame thing with wheels that I attached to the front of my lawnmower that yeah. I put my other leaf blower on. Yep. The big, the that big was like one of your one. first welding projects. It was, well, I broke it because one of my welds broke just from use, you know, yeah. and I'm not the best welder in the world. And that was that was early on in your It was early that on. Was, that was like your first big look yeah. what I did sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's completely from custom and yeah. it's out of aluminum, which is harder to weld. So I needed to fix it. So I, I did, but I haven't welded in, in a little bit, especially aluminum. And I felt like I was a total noob <gasps> again. Oh no. I spent hours trying to do this thing. I could not figure out what I was doing wrong. <gasps> It looks so terrible. Like I didn't even take a picture of them. I'm not going to share because I'm oh. so ashamed of it. But I, I sort of got it done. But I was just like, "What is wrong with me?" And I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to circle back to this one and practice some more." Yeah. And so like I kind of lost my touch a little bit. So that was a bit of a bummer. But you know, I mean, that's, that's what happens I mean. when you jump around to different hobbies, though. That is the downside of anything that's particularly that's like skill based. Yeah, that you need to kind of keep up with. It yeah. just made me realize like, oh, it's kind of been a little while. I need to. And I didn't, I wasn't like so good at welding that I could just like pick it back up anytime and be good. I like sort of got adequate, but then, you know, I don't have those long standing like muscle memory stuff. So I, I need to practice that a little bit more. Speaking of which, I, you did remind me, I, I, I did revisit a hobby. Um, oh, yeah? I had a friend send me her Game Boy Color and mm. uh, then mowed me what it cost to replace the screen with a uh, nice LED screen, oh, yeah. a touch sensor, some new buttons and a new shell. So okay, yeah. I did, I did do that. Cool. So, well, you've done that a bunch, so it's I probably have, like- But it's nice when someone pays me to do theirs so I don't have to spend any of my own money. Yeah. So I get to do exactly. my favorite hobby, but with no, no none of the expense. That's how this pen company got started. I wanted to do woodworking <laughs> and I was making pens for people. Yeah, um, so that's, I need to send it yeah. to her. Um, but- uh, That's cool. Yeah, it's done. It's got a little LED, it's got a touch sensor on the top, so you can like change the color of the screen. That's and cool. It's got little Game Boy color logo lights up, and you can change the color of the lit up logo. Neat. It's pretty rad. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, we had two kids' birthday parties this weekend. Ooh. One of which I didn't attend. It was like Ellie's friend's sister or something like that. Trampoline so park. She went. No, this is just, just out of the house. Out. Yeah. yeah, my kids are getting to the age where like yeah. the parties are just like them hanging out. Yeah, the that makes houses. sense. And I'm like, thank goodness, this is getting easier. Um, just drop them so off and leave. Cool. Yeah, and the other one was my nephew. That was his birthday. So I got to see a bunch of my family and that was cool. Um, I did some woodworking as well. So keeping up my skills with my random hobbies. Um, I had to make some pen stands, you know, things for like, you know, vendor gifts and stuff like that that we like to do. I made a charcuterie board that I think turned out really great. It did. Um, so yeah, really, really pleased with that one. So the woodworking, I've got a more of a base for those skills. So um, still good to get some sawdust under my fingernails every now and then. Um, and then I've been playing more saxophone. I've been pretty much keeping up with it every day. And wow. I'm loving it. And I bought one and it's on the way. So I've been renting one and I was like, I was pretty sure I was going to buy one. I, I Rachel did one. spill spill those beans. Yeah, um, la, I, I late, think it's my Christmas gift sort of maybe. La, late last week, she mentioned something about that. Yep. But you had said you were thinking about it anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wasn't I No, wasn't I pulled surprised. the trigger. Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to get here Monday next week. So. Ten, tenor. Tenor sex, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I still want to bury really bad, but we'll see. We'll get there. I want to prove to myself that I'll stick with the tenor. Once Ellie steals this while. one from you, you can get a berry for yourself. <laughs> right. 
then she'll want to steal the berry. But Probably. I think a berry is as tall as she is, so we'll see about well, that. Well, what you do with her is like, <laughs> I feel like she would be a good person to kind of like use in reverse psychology on them and just buy just a tuba and be like, yeah, you probably can't handle this though. And she'll be like, oh yeah, watch. <laughs> yeah, she would. <laughs> and then meanwhile, you go get your berry and leave, leave her with the, the tuba bait. It's not a bad strategy. <laughs> not a bad strategy. I mean, I got a bass guitar, got an acoustic guitar. I have an accordion. I inherited my uncle's accordion. Do you really? Full size accordion. I would love to learn how to play the accordion. It needs like, a little work though. It if I could snap repair. my fingers and play any instrument. It would be the accordion? It would be the concertina. Okay. But that's different. Pretty much. This is like a full size like piano, yeah. I mean, all the buttons. That would be awesome. The pirate, the, the I would the the concertina is a little bit more pirate sea shanty. That's what I want. Yeah, like yeah. I want to be able to play Definitely. that, dress as a pirate, and go to parties. You could make that happen, Drew. I I, I don't have a musical <laughs> knack. I just I don't have it in me. I wish yeah. I did. It's just not my brain it's doesn't work in there. like that now. Yeah, yeah, I feel you on that, but. No, you don't. Been, you know how to music. I have other things like that that I just oh, okay. can't like wrap my head around. All right. But yeah, music is one that I enjoy. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's also inspired me to listen to a lot of like band, like jazz and big band oh, music yeah. too. Because I'm like, you know, listen for the sax now. Um, so I will say 8-Bit Big Band, if you've not heard of them. Is it actually 8-Bit? Like, they're amazing. Like they're, Nintendo music? All of their music is video game music. So it's they play all... All kinds of different, but they are a franchises. Band. They're a big band, like jazz. Oh, okay, band. okay. But they modern cover... jazz band, <gasps> but they do their own custom arrangements Ooh. of video game music. Ooh, Mario stuff, Sonic stuff, Portal, you name it. It's oh, all over the place. That's awesome. They have like four albums out. <laughs> They've won a Grammy for Meta Knight's uh, Revenge, I think it was that uh, this cool. year. Pretty rad. I'll have to they check are them out. inspiring and incredible. And <laughs> if you like video games, you would love their music. They're okay. <laughs> video games for nerds. Video games are right. okay. Yeah. Um, so I love them, and I'm gonna try and look up when they have concerts because I think they'd be so cool to see live. I've wanted to take my kids to a live music concert to like be something memorable because uh, the first concert that I went to as a kid, I was like 15. Um, and Joseph's going to be 14 soon. That's like coming up. Um, but it was really memorable, but I wanted to take my kids to see trans Siberian orchestra cause they like the music yeah. and they put on a heck of a show, but we don't have a concert venue in Richmond here anymore. So we have to travel like somewhere to go see it. And like DC, I think is the closest place to see trans Siberian orchestra. And it's like on a Tuesday or something. So I don't know logistically how we would do it without like taking them out of school or whatever. Um, but I think there's an 8-bit big band that's coming in January to like Newport News, which is like an hour away. That could happen. Chrono Trigger main theme. Yeah. That one has to be a banger. Chrono Trigger. They're has incredible. Of... Every song oh, they, they make did is... Snake Eater? Yeah, <gasps> Snake Eater. And it's like a James Bond theme. Oh, yeah. It's so rad. Shannon knows that song. You will love it. Because I play it so much. Yeah, yeah. But they like hardcore lean into the Bondness. Oh like yeah, the singer and everything. That's great. Oh no, that that's, that's what it sounds in the game. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, they're really cool. They're remaking that game. I'm super excited. Uh, Metal nice. Gear Solid Three, Snake yeah. Eater. They're getting it's getting a full PS5 release. Like cool. everything new graphics. Oh my god. Oh, that's fun. Love that game. That's fun. Um, listen to Lucky Chops. Too many zoos. Oh, I know them. That's the Subway Tuba Man or yeah. Subway Subway Barry Sub Sucks. Yeah, that Leo guy. P. Yeah, with Leo like the, Pellegrino. Yeah, he does like the spinny moves and stuff. Yes, he's like part of the reason why I, he's got like blue hair pink hair his stuff. hair is different like every day yeah, yeah 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 yep he's inspiring yeah i've, I've like he's sucked me down the, the rabbit yeah. hole a little bit like yeah. i saw his one of the subway videos and then i've watched some too many zoos videos yeah. and yeah, yeah he's so he used to be fun part, he used to be in lucky chops i think he's not with them anymore too many zoos is like his band that he started oh and they're more he like makes Brass house that saxophone sound like not a saxophone it sounds like he's really. It sounds like amazing. distorted techno. Yeah, like, he does some cool stuff. Or, 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 or. Like, yeah, it's he like does cool stuff. All yeah. sorts of funky stuff. Yeah, like is he That's using any rad. electronic distortion or no? It's all really. Just, yeah, he's like it's all just techniques he's using. Altissimo, and he's like bites the reed and growls and does what? Kind of stuff. Yeah, it's all it's all legit. It's pretty cool. Oh wow. Yeah. So yeah, he's like he's a. Sometimes a it sounds like it, sometimes it sounds like an alarm or something like that, oh, yeah. like a like a submarine alarm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like. Yeah, no, he's all doing it. He's always doing that's that. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, right? that dude, that dude's skill. Yeah. 
Yeah, for real. So yeah, he's part of the reason, like I, I found him a couple of years ago and I was just like, oh man, I miss playing Barry Sachs. I bet he makes it look so fun. fun. It is fun. It's so fun. It's Especially so fun. if you do that little like foot shuffle spin that he can do. Well, I'm not gonna say that I could do that, but well, just playing the just you, playing you that there. instrument is fun there. because like I played the contrabass clarinet and it's it's so low. And the same thing when I played sousaphone too, it's so low that like you feel the vibrations of the instrument as you're playing it. Mm. It's a very visceral experience. And I just really love that. That's why so I have a subwoofer you're, in my It's car, like you're you know? physically connected to the music. Yeah, basically. Because your yeah. body is feeling the notes. Yeah. And you're producing it as you're feeling it. So it's like this it's like whole- a, Yeah, it's like a circle. Feedback loop. Yeah. yeah that's so cool. That's very cool. I can imagine I how that, that would be fulfilling. I enjoy that a lot. So yeah, we'll see. The, we'll start out with the tenor sax. And then we'll see how crazy I drive. When are you gonna when are you gonna record you playing for the pencast? <laughs> I already recorded myself. I almost showed it last week. This was like after three days. I of want playing. you to be comfortable. I mean, I'm not but, whatever. It's I'm not trying to be great or anything. Right. I am getting a lot better. Well, if you don't already. put it on the pencast, at least send it to me because I want to hear. Some I'll, I'll do it at some point. If, right. if y'all want to see me play the tenor sax, let me know. It's of not course, gonna, they're gonna say yeah. It's not gonna be anything amazing at this point, but I kind of want to like have my sax like the right okay. now is the rental one and like okay all some right. of the notes is like i think it's like some of the keys are all right we'll wait we'll wait for you so i'm like hitting notes weird anyway we'll see we'll see i'll practice though i'll, get, right. I'll get something ready right when, now i'm practicing when, when will it arrive uh next week okay so i'll have it very cool and i'm gonna try and get rachel's parents or, or rachel's whole family is visiting us next week so we're gonna have like 10 people yeah now, and we'll so. be off so maybe maybe next next pencast because it'll be a week maybe maybe you'll you'll be i'm trying to like have a jam session because rachel's dad plays trumpet so Rachel and her mom both play piano. We got guitar, bass, guitar. So we might like bust it out and do a little jam session. That's amazing. Family. And her sister played drums. We don't have a drum kit. So you use pots and um, pans. It's be fun. Yeah. You got a bunch of five gallon buckets. Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> I just said that assuming yeah. you had a bunch of five gallon buckets. Oh, I definitely have five gallon buckets. You know I do. <laughs> I don't have a single five gallon bucket. I save five gallon buckets. If I'm like, you know, I like sealed my sister's fence and I was like, I'm keeping these buckets. <laughs> do you need this bucket? <laughs> Because you buy an empty five gallon bucket, it's like hey, eight, you eight know, bucks I, at Home Depot or something. I'm like, I, do you want this bucket? Because I'll take, I'll take the bucket. I'll you know? use some five gallon buckets. <laughs> you know, I'm going to use some five gallon buckets. You can put a lot of stuff in there. I put, I put rocks in there, <laughs> and I got to haul some rocks. You know. <laughs> hey, whenever I need to, like, you know, mix mix up something, you know, I'll put if some I rocks gotta, in there. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I'm like, so, you know, sometimes you need to move rocks around. What do you need? What? Why is that so weird? I have different rocks that I use for different parts of my property, and sometimes you know they're all mixed together, and I got to sort them out. Buckets? Yeah, I got rock buckets. <laughs> is that weird? Well, they're not dedicated rock buckets. They're buckets that can hold rocks, but you can do other things too. You know, if I got to mix up some mortar and fix, you know, some some brickwork or something, and you need a you need a vessel for the mortar. That, you just that mix it that, up in a bucket. That, that's that statement sounds way more realistic than just like you know. Sometimes I'll put so rocks, I put in, rocks it. in it. That's just it's the just first sound, thing that came to mind. Just, you know, that that makes it sound like you're just doing it for fun. Like <laughs> yeah, just put rocks in buckets and carry it around. You know, doesn't everybody? Is that weird? Oh yeah, this is my life. No, this well I, I think you're. On I am a very lazy homeowner. You're a very active homeowner. So like I am. I think normal yeah. lies somewhere in between us. Yeah, I'm definitely not normal. Yeah. You shouldn't peg me. You're probably more normal. I'm way just way pegged up. I don't know, man. I still haven't I still scale. haven't caulked my front light fixtures yet. I think that's more normal though. I think that most okay. people have a lot of uncaulked right. light fixtures. All right. Most people are not hauling boxes. I've got, in buckets. So I've got I've got aluminum um <laughs> window uh uh window window sills, like you know, yeah. Um, yeah. all of the white paint is flaking off of those. I need oh, to yeah. scrape all that and paint it. And every day mm. I see it. Um, and every day I'm like, I can, let me go inside and do something about that. And then I go inside and something else takes my attention away and I I'm can, gone. I can see that. I have a list on my fridge. There's some special paint that is good to buy for aluminum. Yeah. If you need a, if you need a, a, a paint I recommendation. Do, I do. And I need to, to redo the mailbox numbers on my mailbox. Oh, yeah. I've had to do that too. They basically look like the wood that they're attached to. Oh. Um, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I use the like stick on numbers. Like on the mailbox? Yeah. Yeah. I could do that. But they're like super reflective and stuff. So you see them at night really well. Yeah. That's not a bad they're idea. Really big. I, yeah. just, I think I just need some like white numbers because yeah. they're on, they're, they're like nailed to the post. Oh, okay. I just need to either. You're take... in like a neighborhood. Like, does everybody have the same type of thing, or is it just free for all? You just do whatever you want. Uh, I, more free for all than not, but I don't think we're allowed to have the numbers on our houses. 
because no one has the really? numbers on the house. Interesting. Like no one. Because huh. we were driving, we were leaving, and then Shannon's like, oh, why don't we just put them on the house? I'm like, oh, yeah, we can do that. Wait. And I looked around, I'm like, no one has them. Like, Maybe is just that... nobody's thought of it. I'm thinking it's probably not allowed. Because we do have an HOA, Maybe. but it's a very inactive HOA. Okay. Like, I don't know what they do, and they're not expensive, so I think they basically just like you know, take care of the front entrances to the subdivision. That could I don't be. Know. That could be. Yeah. That's fine. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Well, that's about it. All right. I've killed a lot of time here with some random garbage, but hopefully y'all still enjoy it. Um, we got some company updates and then we'll wrap it up. All right. Um, we had a scavenger hunt that happened last week. Did we talk about it? We said we were we going did. to do it. We didn't talk about how it actually went, though. Yeah. But it was really cool. It was. It, it was all movie themed, so I created my clues around different movie references. Not like trivia, like you had to know the movie, but, you know, yeah. uh, uh, like um, we have a uh, over where we keep the um, con uh, con. 40 converters from pilot someone put a picture of captain kirk yelling khan from wrath of khan so mm -hmm. i'm like that is obviously where i had one of the clues i said uh -huh. like you know you know anyway but there was there was enough references back there like you know trevor has a bowling pin over there so obviously i did a big lebowski reference to mm -hmm. you know kind of point people toward that so underneath that was a clue so there was definitely a, a good amount and it was a lot yeah. of fun everybody seemed to have a good time oh yeah I requested that everybody wear formal Academy Award attire and maybe three people dressed up. So I was there were, more, there were more than that, but you know, not everybody did it. it. Me, Jenea, Glenn, Ebonique, and I think that's it. Oh, a Rachel and you. Jen, yeah. I dress up as a paparazzo. Yeah, so Brian was wearing <laughs> all black, black tie, and went around the entire hour <laughs> like intentionally taking awful pictures of people. I was like yelling people's names when they turned around and like hitting them it was with like hilarious. the bright flash and everything. Yes. So I got some really good photos of people that are like, hmm? are you going to be able to, like, yeah, I, uh, yeah I, have to, I have to edit them still, but yeah. All right. I, I know that all of them are going to be extremely unflattering. We don't, we don't want to share all of them, but we can absolutely share some of me. So if you can get some before I the pen get cast. a lot of good ones of you though, unfortunately. Really? Yeah. Not, they're not supposed to be good. You were so like attentive. Oh. I couldn't catch you off guard. Did you easily. give me a, you got some of me eating though. Though. I got you. I got some of you. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I did get some of you. We'll at least need to put some bad ones of me. Like I was just, cons I was just consistently sneaking around and trying yeah. to capture. It was pretty bad funny. photos of it people. It was pretty funny. But yeah, um, you know, funny. we did have some winners who won some gift cards and some little cheapo Academy Awards. It's fun. Um, but then I pumped. Uh, I used the PA system that we bought for the uh, DC Pen Show, That's and right. I blasted my favorite movie soundtracks throughout the building. So fun. yeah, it was enjoyable. Good. Very good time. And you know, this is part. You know, normally kind of coincides with our anniversary, which is actually happening. Well, it already happened technically. No, it's happening uh, next week, I think. No, it's this week. This week, I think. Next week. No. Next week, I think. This week. Friday. This week. As, as it publishes, Friday. Yeah. The 17th. That's what I said. So that was the, this marks the anniversary of when we got our first fountain pen products and listed them online. So we existed as a company before that, but we consider a real anniversary when we started selling fountain pen wares. So, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, today, I guess, technically, as we, as you might be watching this. Happy anniversary, um, Brian. Thank you, Drew. Good job having a company that succeeded in one year and then 10 years and still hasn't died. Yeah, 14 years now and running. Because every year is, you know, you're more likely to fail. Um, right? I don't know if that's the statistics. You're a lot more likely to <laughs> fail in the beginning. That's it, yeah. Once you make it past like the 10 year mark, mm -hmm. you're a lot more stable. Okay, but well, good job. It's never guaranteed. You're fine, you can stop Plenty now. of businesses fail every yeah. day. <laughs> So it's never lost on me how grateful I am that we exist at all no, as a company. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Yeah. So that's cool. So anyway, we're not really doing anything special. That's a problem with like our anniversary. It always falls like right before Black Friday and all this stuff. So it like doesn't make sense for us to do a whole lot. Yeah. Like publicly, whatever for y'all. So we just keep it more internal. But anyway, you can just know that it's our anniversary and we're we had the anniversary it. we had um the scavenger hunt which was we also had a catered meal after that and then this week we're having like a little uh office thanksgiving lunch as well we are so yep. it's it's not anniversary specific but it is a fun it happens to work you know out. We, yeah. we've got some back-to-back -back fun events yeah oh, yeah this is the time of year where we start to buy a lot of food for the office um and no one's complaining no nope. um, so just a reminder here we will be taking a break next week from the pencast for thanksgiving 
And our office is going to be closed on Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, November 23rd. And then we're going to have reduced staff on Black Friday. We're technically open. I mean, our website's open all the time, but um, we will open open and accessible on Friday. Um, just we happen to have a lot of people taking off for various things. So, you know, we used to have it be where we would take off completely, but then some people were like in town and they were like, well, I would work if you'd let me. And it's a busy day. And it's so definitely, it's not like we it's can't It's definitely use busy. It. So now we just have it be like, pretty much we'll let whoever take off that you know is visiting family or has stuff going on but whoever is able to work works so that's kind of cool um and then we are going to have some sales and deals for black friday weekend slash week we're seeing a lot of sales and deals and stuff happening kind of already so we're going to have some little teaser sale stuff that's happening basically already as you're seeing this um it's too early to say exactly what everything is but we'll have some stuff um happening and then we'll have more stuff happening the actual like black friday through cyber monday weekend thing so check email check social check our website uh and we'll have all that info there but you'll get some some deals and stuff so good time had by all cyber cyber monday and that's cyber funny? monday yeah what context is cyber used i don't not none anymore anything except for cyber monday that's it and like the net uh well no i guess uh D isn't Tesla calling that truck the cyber truck? Cyber truck, yeah. I mean, but that doesn't make the word any more. Cooler. I guess it's technically happening, but they announced it like five years ago, and it still is yet to roll out. Every time, every, the only thing I know about it is that all these pictures I'm seeing of it and videos I'm seeing of it are just close-ups of how all the joints don't meet and <laughs> all of the panels are, you know, distorted and bent and <laughs> off kilter. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's cyber. What do you expect? It's cyber. Yeah. Anyway, um, okay, time to wrap it up. All right, I want to thank you all for watching. Please leave us some feedback. Let us know how we're doing. You can email us at pencast at gulepens.com. If you're an audio listener, ask us some questions. You can leave it in the comments. We'll ask periodically on Instagram, so just watch out for that. Uh, check out gulepens.com for your fountain pen, ink, and paper needs. Like us and subscribe on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and more. Brian. Did you just remember something? What? I did. Okay, because I got a fun fact, but you go ahead. We've got a new video coming out this week about fun filling mechanisms oh, yeah. for your fountain totally pen. I totally forgot about that. Brian talks about, and this will be up for you to enjoy right now, um, Brian talks about all the different ways you can fill your fountain pen, such as converter. Yes, that's one of them, the most obvious one. <laughs> But we got others that, like the inkwells, the various Twisby mechanisms, the various snorkely looking things that we've got. Kind of break it all down and there show you. Go. So you can check those out in case you're curious about how to fill your pens. So yeah, check that out. All right, ready for fun facts, Drew? Yes, ready for the fun fact. So I pulled a bunch of penguin facts because we are Ooh. launching our cozy penguins. Penguin. This week. Have you seen that video with Benedict Cumberbatch, poorly pronouncing penguin? I haven't, no. So he did like, he narrated some like nature documentary. Okay. And he in that documentary could not say penguin. Really? He was like penguin and pung peng ping penguin <laughs> and yeah, just couldn't, couldn't, just couldn't, couldn't do, do it. it. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of people make fun of him for okay. that. Okay, well Poor he's guy. human, that's okay. Yeah. Um, so some fun facts about penguins. A group of penguins in the water is called a raft, but on land they're called a waddle. A waddle of penguins. Well, that makes sense. So when you see a group of penguins walking around, they're, they're waddle, a waddling. Huh. Isn't that cool? More animals should be classified by the way in which they move. Hmm. I'm sure there's, it's very interesting what different groups of animals are called. Like like a, a group of bunnies should be called a hop. <laughs> Why not? That would be good. Or what a bound, a, a bound, a bound, a bound of bunnies. A bound of bunnies. How delightful is that? A bound of bunnies. Bunnies are adorable. Because a bound means a, like to traverse, you know? A bound of bunnies. Let's make that happen. Makes sense. By the way, did you notice that like in my last couple of videos, I've been saying barrel filler and not eyedropper? I'm yeah. trying real hard to make that happen, buddy. You are. You and your and hard rubber instead of ebonite. I'm trying. I'm just you're, imposing. You're I'm imposing my will. You're growing as a person. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I don't think it's going to work. Can you undo 120 years of progress? No. Um, probably not. All right. Um, the black and white tuxedo look donned by most penguin species is a clever camouflage called counter shading. So when swimming, the black on their backs helps them blend in with the darkness of the ocean from predators viewing them from above. <gasps> and their white bellies help them to blend in with the bright surface of the ocean when being viewed by predators that prey from below. What? Isn't that crazy? That's cool. So there's a purpose to all that. Oh, that's awesome. I did not what know What about that. zebras? I've never understood zebras. They come from Africa. 
Yeah. What the heck is black and white out in the savanna? Well, most animals are colorblind. So the the black and whiteness looks, I mean, most a lot of things look black and white to most animals. Okay, so they're just basically the same thing as tigers. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. That I makes believe, sense. Right. I believe, yeah. There we go. That makes there sense. There might be more of a reason. Did you know that zebras, if you shave them, their skin is actually striped? I did know that. It's not just the hair. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Um, and then last but not least, a penguin's thick feathers aren't the only way that the bird stays warm. They have a gland near the base of their tails that provide waterproof oil. And the penguins spend several hours each day covering their feathers with that oil. And they give extra attention to the task before swimming. So You know what they really need if they wanted to stay warm? What's that? A sleeveless hoodie. You know what? Black that and white. Would be, that would be evolution right there. There we go. They need a counter shaded <laughs> sleeveless yes. vest hoodie. <laughs> yes. Then they would be all set. They'd be the coolest penguin in the area in the in the in the waddle i also read somewhere i have no idea if this is true i just pull all this from the internet so none of it might be true yeah that's fine um Why but start now? i heard somewhere that antarctica they estimate is made up of about two percent penguin urine oh how about that so think about that think about that as the ice caps are melting think about how much urine is going into the ocean two percent that's a lot. That's a lot of urine. Yeah. I don't know how true that is. That seems preposterous. How would you measure that? <laughs> I don't know. I guess if you know the population of penguins and you know their average output. Well, and think about it. Like, it stays frozen all the time. So, like, as they pee, it just builds up more and more and more and more. I mean, now things are melting because. Yeah, it can't really evaporate. Humans, but, yeah, exactly. Oh, so, I think it's just, like, over thousands, tens of thousands of years. Oh. So much urine has happened. How about that? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Penguins are very interesting. They, yeah, they, they yeah, really are. Yeah, there are interesting facts about penguins. So Yeah, the, the, the animals get more interesting the more specific a habitat they tend to live in. Yeah. Like they just become so impressively adapted to that single environment. It's yeah. very fascinating. Yeah, penguins are I love very animals. well adapted. I could, I, could, I could like just... So cool. I feel like if I have only access to one channel, it'd be like, you know, just let me watch Blue Planet and Discovery Earth all day long. Oh, yeah. Planet Earth never series. Get, never gets Love old. It. Yeah, never so gets great. old. So great. Very cool. All right, up, folks. Hope this holds you over for a couple of weeks. We'll be back in December. December 1st, I think, is when we come back. Gosh. Yeah. That's when we're going to be back. We need Wild. to get started on the uh, best of the year videos. Yeah, I know. We always do the, we'll uh, you know, it. hottest pens of the year, hottest things of the year. We'll do it. If y'all right. have any thoughts, let us know. Yeah. We're going to pick whatever we feel like anyway. But, but still. We'll read your we wouldn't comments. say no to some free ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one. And right on.